See, you got it there too. It's right there at that tone, right? It's right there. Right, at that but then tone. you get like fucking years and years of whiskey on top, and you got gecko. Get- <laughs> Oh, that's fucking hilarious, man. I love it so much. All right. Well, uh, if you hadn't guessed it already, we are uh, back. Here is uh, another episode coming at you live. Uh, well, no, not live. Hang on well, a second. It's, Take a step back from that real quick. I uh, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about sometimes. Well, it is live. I get live. excited. It is live, but it's not live. It is, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's our, it's life. our life. life. It's our life. And it'll be someone else's live when it happens. But now it's our live. Ladies and gentlemen, the infamous, the glorious, Doc Ellis. Hi, folks. Ah, shh. Everybody just calm the fuck down. We'll be all right. Uh, hey, man, how are you guys doing? And how are you doing? Folks, I'm going to start your show. <laughs> I'm going to start your show by saying uh, I've known this young man for uh, quite a bit of a long time. I have uh, much respect for this young man because uh, uh, I've been around him and I know his work ethic. But even above that, you, sir, are probably one of the most peaceful, zenful, just like I really admire the way your mind works. I do, man. I think you're 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 one of my favorites. So I'm very happy to be doing us with people being able to see us be us. Well, thank you so yeah, much, man. man. I appreciate having you on the show, man. I feel the same way about you. You uh, you definitely have that third eye going for you, man. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm very. I, I was enjoying your uh, your Zen Garden today on uh, <sighs> on the face of. The Book of Face. The Book of Face. Yes. The Book of Face. Where that if it, is a beautiful meditation garden, my friend. It is, man. And it all uh, came to be, um, not that you asked me that, but it all came to be uh, because uh, uh, when, we, when, when, I moved, when we moved into that, that home, uh, the backyard was just, it was neglected and it, had, it, it, it was lifeless. <clears throat> and, uh, um, and, and it started off very small with just a little pull. Uh, and, I, and when I mean a little pool, I'm talking about like I went down to Target and bought forty nine dollars worth of pool, right? <laughs> just enough so I could sit in it, have a beer, and just be like, "I oh, mean, I had a pool in the backyard," you know? Because <laughs> believe me, I dig simple things. So uh, I, I actually had a party that day. Actually, when I got it all done up, and was like, "Yeah, we're having a barbecue now." Anyway, I get excited about stupid stuff. So uh, it started with that. Then, uh, then, then that didn't. And then I bought a piece of grass from uh, like Lowe's. And then that came into play. And then uh, Rebecca wanted a hammock, and then the hammock got into it. And then, we, and then it, just, it just constantly kept building. And, and the, one of the key parts of it, actually most of it, I, I, I'm really proud of, like um, we got like $500 worth of tiles, but because we got it off that Facebook marketplace, and like, they're like, hey, if you break it down, you can fucking have it for 50 you know, it's like a bucket tile, you know? So, like, that's where all that brown stuff came from, and I just painted that Mr. Miyagi style. <clears throat> and the other piece that I'm very um, uh, proud about is my feature piece, which is the, the jacuzzi. The jacuzzi I, I bought for $250. It's a portable, like, like you take on a camping trip jacuzzi. Dude, that thing is badass. It's the best two hundred fifty dollars I've ever spent in my life. Is it's that, like a it's like a twelve hundred dollar. Anyway, bargain shopping. So what I'm saying is the whole Zen backyard, dude. It's Zen on a budget. I love that though. <laughs> Who doesn't love saving money on a budget for their Zen uh, peace card? Come man? on, man. It's a fucking beautiful thing you got going on there. It is, and it's it's very it's a very nice place to hang out. So if you if you've got a because of what's been going on, if you have to hang somewhere, it's a nice place to hang. Yeah, I've been looking forward to doing something similar to mine, man. Yeah. You know, I, well, I, I saw you. I appreciate torches. the. Yeah, they got the yeah, torches dude. out. You, you there. have a you have a spot back there. And I'm like, oh, that's got great vibe. You know, yeah. Oh, it's fun, yeah. man. It's fun. We just got to get the the turf going. Like you got like that astroturf's nice. Out here in the desert, the the fucking grass don't do it, man. You know, we tried, we yeah. tried, we tried, and we got that spot that's just perfect. For astroturf and a fire pit and like nice little zen area, man. I go out there and meditate, but yeah. Now, what I'm starting to, to figure out about the the astroturf and or in the grass and the heat that we all know is Vegas. And if folks you've never been to Vegas, uh, it, it it imagine like uh, cooking. I don't know something that that cooks for like 
Like, ma- imagine baking like a cookies, and then you open your cookie drawer and you stick your head in there, and that's pretty much what Vegas feels like in the summer. So that astroturf that you're talking about, I'm noticing now, and we've only hit the 90s. I mean, we're, we're getting close right now. Uh, like May 1st, I think it's supposed to be 103 today. So if it is, then we've hit it legit. We're in summer. And all those tiles at AstroTurf, dude, that shit gets hot. Oh, so yeah. so the Zen den in the summertime, hot on the tootsies. You got to get yourself some uh, some misters or something going on out there. Well, That's got to be the next step. Totally. You know? Get that cool cool breeze going yeah, in the totally. summertime. And then, yeah, and then some fans, you know. But not like fans, you know. I want them big old fans that sway back and forth. Oh, those are the good. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Why, I mean, they're probably stupid expensive, but, yeah, I mean, they probably I'm sure at either. this at this moment in time, you could probably find stuff pretty cheap. You can find just about anything pretty cheap right now, man. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. people need that shit sold. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fuck all this junk in my garage. <laughs> dude, I've got... <laughs> oh, my God. Some shit. I know, dude. <laughs> I think about this all the time because I have such a, a bitchin' uh, guitar collection. And um, I think I have like 50-some-odd guitars. And um, and it, it, it breaks my heart that they most of them just sit around and, and um, collect dust. And I know they're made to be played. And the reason I have 54 guitars is, one, whenever I find something I like, i got to have two of it. <laughs> <clears throat> and then, um, uh, because I like working in studio, uh, uh, you gotta have, you know, I, you, you want that tone? Well, you gotta have that guitar. You want that? To, well, you gotta have that guitar. You know, this is, of course, before. I guess now you push a button on your phone and it sounds like a fucking Dan Electro twelve string. Oh yeah, man. yeah. Okay. Okay. You just get one of those new line sixes, and uh, it sounds like everything. And you push it, you just turn a little switch, and it's uh, tuned to all kinds of different tunings, oh. just all oh. instantaneously. Is you it? hook it up to one of the uh, line six amplifiers that can simulate any amplifier, oh. plus simulate any guitar that you have in your hand. It's, oh. it's fucking awesome. Uh, Anthony was playing with one. Uh, at Nam, and we were just like, we got to get this for him. Oh, we got to get this thing. That's got to be one of the funnest. I mean, I, I guess I would, because when you were talking about it originally, like when I was saying, um, my punk rock self is like, fuck that. I can cuss, right? <laughs> Please. You know, yeah. It's Fucking like, swear. You know, you know, so there's that part of me that just must go, man, fuck that shit. That ain't real, dude. You got to earn that shit. Yeah. You want to fucking learn how to play an alternate tuning, motherfucker? Learn how to play an alternate tuning, you know? And uh, and then, of course, now the old man in me is sitting here, you know, hearing that and going, wow, that's really convenient. <laughs> <laughs> However, could you imagine? Could you imagine? Like, I mean, well, I try to imagine. Like, I started playing music somewhere around uh, six ish, eight ish. Maybe, can you imagine having that kind of technology at your disposal? I mean, you know, and still, having said that, I still see videos of like, you know, four year old little Asian girls who are just. You know, like, what the fuck? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I saw some kid boxing today. He's like eight years old, dude. And this dude was just, he was throwing down just this bad. I'm like, man, if he stays on that, like, and I'm, um, and the reason I'm, that came up is I'll tie it with, you know, the, the new video games you get at the house. Like, you know, like for me, the, that Wii gym thing or whatever it is, I mean, you have to work out. Oh, so yeah. those boxing things, like I've, I had that boxing game and nothing will tire your out, your ass out faster than hitting air. Oh, dude. Dude. He just, you know, so, um, but this kid, he's just throwing down. I'm like, God damn, that kid in 20 years, well, I don't know. I mean, not even 20 years. He's eight now, so 10 years. Yeah. You know, this dude could be, you know, the next motherfucker, you know. It's amazing. No, the thing is, is he's he's going to be competing against a bunch of other kids that are doing the same exact thing, you That's know. That's right. It's that That's... YouTube generation mm-hmm. where, like, mm-hmm. they can see every single fight, slow it down, mm-hmm. you know, really study technique, and then train their asses off from such a young age, and it's, and know it's encouraged. The, right, and know the goods. Like, they get yeah. the knowledge, you know. Yeah. I, 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 I put it th- uh, folks, folks who think I'm talking crazy, uh, yeah, I'm turning 53 in 20 days. So when I hit 50, Happy birthday. Thank you. When I hit 50, like my, I had made a conscious decision that I wasn't going to struggle the way I did the first half of my life. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to coast on the back nine. I'm just going to chill out now. It's a so, good call. Right. So, so, and I've never had children. So like when I see things like this and I'm always wondering about, because all I can relate my life is t- to is what I have experienced. So I only know life from what I see through my eyes and what has happened to me. But I do remember how I, how I acted at certain ages and at eight years old 
dude, I wasn't fucking throwing down with fucking Muhammad Ali techniques. And, you know, I was fucking listening to Kess. You know, it's just kind of like, yeah. you know, these fucking kids are just like, they're into some shit. And I find that amazing. But I'm, I mean, having said that, I'm sure it's probably always been like that. It just wasn't in my face like Facebook is, you know. Well, I think it's just, uh, I think it's generational, you know. Uh, people uh, have these insp- inspirations before them. Like uh, another great example, Anthony always drives me nuts with uh, him growing up playing guitar with him. Because when he was like 15, he got one of those little machines that would slow everything down, right? So yeah. now he can fucking take Ingve Malmsteen songs, slow them down super fucking slow, learn every single note of the song, then practice the fuck out of it, come to practice the next day. This motherfucker's shredding Ingve solos. And he's a kid. He's in high school. He's in, you know, what, yeah. ninth grade. Yeah. It's fucking disgusting, you know? And it took Ingve his whole life to get to that level right and uh and now there's kids that are even that's the joke to them they you know like they, uh, fuck, well, who's that kid uh, christian uh, uh, at the club uh, he, he played okay. you know you mm-hmm. remember christian mm-hmm. fuck what was his last name you got me there it, anyways fucking yeah christian was amazing what an amazing talent he would yeah. come in and he would stand up with some of the fucking best guitar players know, in town dude. and he was just this little kid who fucking shred it because he practiced his ass off. Right, you know? right. And you it's, see it's, all that shit on YouTube, slow it down and learn it all. And it's always amazing. And the part that, that, that makes it even better is they throw down like that at their young age. And, man, it, like, the shit ain't even hit them yet. You know, where you get that other side of what it is you do. Yeah. You know? So can you imagine this? You get this amazing talent, and then all of a sudden you get shit on for a little bit, and all of a sudden you become this total- Hendrix. Yeah. You become a guy like Hendrix, you know? Yeah, you, just, you learn how to play guitar like you, <laughs> as opposed to oh look, like I can like for example for me I can play guitar like Les Claypool, right? Or, but it's like you still gotta know how to play guitar like Jason, you know, right? Like, exactly. You know, or bass like Jason, as I should and, say. And there's a lot of and, and that leads me to other thoughts. There's a lot of that that I've gotten into, and actually, I, I, um, it's for that reason that I get to be who I get to be, is because I get to work with people who usually just kind of let me do that thing yeah you know because i'm like i mean i'm like a jack of all trades and whatnot but like when i just get to like let all those fucking things happen at the same time that's that's always that's that's when i feel like i get to do my best work if and i try to carry that over when i do cover gigs so if i'm playing fucking jesse's girl it's Doc Ellis played it like Jesse's girl, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So um, I, I just used myself in the third person. How weird. But you know what I'm meaning. I didn't mean anything by it. But it, it's, it's just, I don't, but I never used to do that. When I first started taking the cover gigs, it was fucking learn it just like the record, man. You yeah. know, fucking, if he plays that fucking note, you better play that note. And as I kind of developed my own thing, I was kind of like, well, if he's going to use his noodles, I'll use my noodles instead, you know? Hey, that's what yeah. you're there at a yeah. live show for anyways, exactly. man. Exactly, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to a fucking live concert to see you play the song just like the record. I'm going to see a band perform in front of me, you know, yeah. and have some fun and feel the energy, man. That's that's what a live performance is all about, I think, that exchange of energy between the performer and the audience. Truly. Like, did you see the... Uh you, did you see that Prince thing the other night on television? No. Okay. What Prince? <clears throat> yeah, tell me. So four years to the date, uh, they, re- they 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 aired this uh, tribute to Prince, and uh, Sheila E. was the fucking musical director. So uh, and then it aired on like every major network on different days. So I think the first one was CBS. Anyway, point being, what you just said. Um, uh, so Sheila. Uh, because she had worked with Prince all that time, you can hear it, right? Like, if, if if you're a fan of Prince and you know Prince, yeah, you can. He's kind of like Zappa. He's got a, a musical stamp that you just know. I mean, they only they use certain anyway. So they're doing songs that everyone knows, like 1999 or some shit. But then they end it like you know, fucking Prince would end it with this great big fuck gnarly jazz ending, crazy chord thing happening. You're just like, oh my god, amazing, and that is what you go to see a live performance for you know you, for the same thing you're saying and a lot of folks like like that's that's why i don't understand like um um uh, like going to see a uh god i don't know what is, how do you do it but the folks who just do the same i just don't understand that how, one yeah. how can you do it and not go mad well not being a musician helps i would imagine I, <laughs> you know what i mean 
there's certain people that are in it to write music and play music and 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 grow stronger oh, that yeah, way. Yeah, and then there's yeah, certain yeah, people yeah, that are yeah, in yeah, it yeah, because yeah, yeah. they want to do their hair a certain way and they want to live a certain lifestyle. Right. And they get by with the bare minimum musicianship, and right. they're very happy just getting out there and playing their songs and and enjoying the lifestyle. And and whatever, man, more power to them. I'm not I'm not trying to hate on anything uh, like that, but uh, no, you're right. I man. think that's really where it comes from, where people just go out and repeat and repeat and repeat the same fucking set over and over and over again. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It, it, it just, yeah. it, it, and you're right, dude. It's different strokes for different folks. It's it just is. like some guys just do it for different reasons. You yeah. Know? So, cool. Yeah. Some, cool. Pe- some people really just want that image, and they are so caught up in the fact of being a rock star that they lose what it is to be on the stage performing that night, you know? I think they're missing a lot of the fucking glory that they are out seeking yeah, just because I'm, they're distracted with Yeah, I have I have been told if I would to change my image and grow my hair out and, and, and wear the thing, that m- the that, thing. that that there, there was a gig that may you know and just, and that always hit me where so I went you know that's you know like 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 for instance since we live in Vegas like there's um uh that that whole you got to fit the costume vibe yeah you know it's like like the dancers in Vegas and this is the way it works here in Vegas or at least it used to like if you if you're not the right height right weight and you can't fit into the costume you don't get the gig doesn't matter if you can blow everyone else away you don't get the gig because you don't you know so i i find myself it's weird man there is that element it's like oh well you know you don't have the hair and the thing with the so you know you that's not yeah but But, you know i smoked that motherfucker right but yeah but at the yeah at the same level yeah yeah. the guys that do want to do that they're not out there fucking working their ass off to get their fucking chops up to the level that you've uh, you know, worked your ass off to get oh, to. Oh man, you're being you too know. kind. And they, you're making uh, me feel they, guilty because I haven't been practicing. Ah, I know, <laughs> I haven't either, man. I uh, I just got my rig set up. I'm super stoked about it, man. I made noise the other night. Awesome. And, um, start practicing again, bro. It's yeah. been a while. I've been caught up doing the engineering thing and this thing and right. Man, yeah, ah, dude, and, and music is so great. It is, and it's it. That's another freedom. And speaking of that stuff, is I was driving the car the other day, and I ran to my bass player that I use a lot, Josh Jones. Uh, and and we got out and we talked for a bit, and he goes, you know, I haven't. Uh, I figured, you know, hey man, I play every night, you know, but and you know, for th- thirty years, and blah, 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 blah. no, now I don't need to practice. But he goes, dude, I got on there the other day. He goes, it was uncomfortable. I felt I had lost my touch. And right when he said it, I was like, fuck, I haven't touched a guitar in like three weeks, you know. And there was a time where, like, I could, there, I, I do, I, I, I there was a time where, where for decades upon decades i i would not go through a day without at least making an a chord on a guitar if i walk by a guitar i make an a chord you know i'd pick it up hit an a chord and just like and now here's gone three weeks almost a month man i haven't even fucking looked at the damn thing so he tells me this so i'm like oh shit maybe i should go check that out so i get home you know get out of the car go over there pick the guitar up immediately and Immediately, I feel the same thing. It's like, oh, it's uncomfortable. Oh, my hands don't want to do this. Ooh, my nails are a bit long. You know, it's oh, like yeah. nothing's working, you know. Dude, but then, having said that, played a little bit the next day. I went to the studio the next day, and that next day when I got in the studio, I didn't feel any rust at all. It yeah. just, it just you know, it's like when you're, when you're in there and you're hearing it and it's happening, it's just, you know, on, on. I even find sometimes if I take a break, and I let my body just like heal up completely, mm-hmm. and I come back to it. Once I've knocked the rust off, I have a little bit more mm-hmm. to give, you know. And my my speed's gone up by a little fraction. Right. You know? My the strength of my fingers is just a little bit stronger. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and uh, I don't know. I just letting your letting the muscles fully heal and and develop, and then going right back to it. It it always always seemed a little bit better for me. Yeah. It's, it. Uh, um yeah dude they're getting back and i like the fact that you had turned it up the other night so because i mean when you i saw i was checking out your rig dude it's pretty bitching for those of you that don't there know man he's go. got this really cool where, where's the camera i can look at there you oh, go right there right there's there. you right hey there. man for those of you that don't know over here in this little section over here he's got like a bunch of bases and a bunch of amps and some really cool stuff in there and i've noticed that your your control center oh bro and he's you also like kind that? of a uh you know he knows stuff so crazy uh, person crazy person so uh your control center your 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 
pedal board is just what? And then it's all hooked up to like a little phone. I'm like, oh, I got to ask you about that. What's that phone doing? <laughs> What's that phone involved in? Uh, the phone does two things. The phone uh, is my clock, of course. And then uh, Fair enough. it's my iPod, honestly. It just, okay. uh, I play, uh, I use it to play tracks in between songs and stuff mm-hmm, like that. Mm-hmm. And when we're rehearsing, um, I have the list. I can go through the the set list on my uh, my phone. There's actually and and right next to it, there's a bigger claw where my iPad goes, <laughs> and um, and I bring my own desk when we play, and I connect my iPad to my own desk so that I can control my own monitors. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. Because I'm that fucking asshole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, you, no, you and you and Jones are a lot like that way. Jones shows up. It, Jones Jones has had so many sound men fail him in this town that he shows up with a line to you. Yeah. That's it. That's all I need. You plug this in. I control everything else. You know, and puts two things in. Like, it's it's awesome to watch. But but it, it's because of that. It's like, dude, I can never hear myself. And I mean, because for the longest time in Vegas and, and not in the clubs you worked at, and obviously you know I respect you and I'm glad you got your thing and they're fucking doing well. <laughs> but um, uh, for the longest time in Vegas, I thought I was convinced that the only way to get a sound man job was to be able to identify a 57 from a 58. Well, I mean, can they all do that? I don't know. You mean the straight one? <laughs> <laughs> no, there's just too many jobs out here, man. Yeah. That's the fucking beauty of Vegas and being an audio engineer. Straight up, there's so many gigs mm-hmm. that, uh, yeah, they need guys. There's- they need guys bad. And then those jobs, also, those clubs, to be completely honest, are paying that guy 50 bucks. Right, yeah, and dude. Yeah, yeah. It's like, what do you get for 50 bucks? A lot, some of the clubs I was working at would pay more money, which is why I would go there, right. you know, and uh, not that it was great money or anything. But, you know, it's, it wasn't 50 fucking dollars. Right, but I'm not talking about clubs. I'm talking yeah. about the casinos. Oh, the casinos the are casinos. even worse. Yeah, dude. I mean, a club, a club, I expect, you know, it to be pretty damn good and the guy's like you know pulling his hair out because he's oh jesus dude i got stories about that too because he's, he's trying to handle every goddamn thing right yeah and then you've also been there in the ones where you tell within the first couple of minutes like you don't know what the fuck you're doing and you're driving and that's where i get upset because no matter how much i practice no matter how much i try to own my craft and master what it is i do ultimately it's in that motherfucker's hands so if i've got a bad one Guess who looks like the dick? Yeah. So, so I find that upsetting when, when I deal with that. So when I find someone that I like, I very kind of like, oh, yeah, dude, at least, you know, you, you, this dude's on his shit. I live for it, man. Yeah, it's, dude. And you feel it. Life, and man. you feel it. Yeah. I love that shit. Mm-hmm. You could tell a lifer quickly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is what I'll be doing forever. That's right. You know? Yeah. I, I can't help myself yeah. is one of the things. When I got to town, right, I didn't know anybody. I went to every single nightclub in town, and I worked for free mm-hmm. just to get my hands on That's the many fucking boards way you do as it. I could. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, I don't care. You want to just, like, hang out and they drink They call that night? intern. Yeah, and I, would just, <laughs> and I would just go everywhere, and I'd just be like, take the fucking night off. You know, I'll take your 50 bucks. Like, who gives you shit about your 50 bucks? You know, mm-hmm. I get to spend the night mixing bands, growing, learning, 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 learning. And then, uh, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun, man. Mm-hmm. It was but fun. I've always looked at uh, uh, what anybody does in that, and I'm talking about artists and dancers, and I mean the whole gamut of it. For those lifers and those fuckers that have been cursed with it, that's the way I see it. It's like a cursed curse. With it's, it. it is. It's like a curse, man. You're you're cursed with it. And it's an addiction. Yeah. You're gonna do it whether anybody's watching or not. You, when you do it, the best is when no one's watching. <laughs> You know, I mean, and you and and you will go out and fucking work for somebody to make money so that you can support your habit until yeah. your habit starts supporting you, and I, and it never really does. You no, know, yeah, no. it never does. You you, I mean, we uh, hope we. Uh, I mean, but yeah, well, not. I, I don't know. I, maybe it does for some. I don't know. Maybe I don't it's know. just a tax write off. Yeah, I've I, I I've I've always been very like I was saying earlier. I like simple things. I'm a stupid guy, so like I just always wanted to be very comfortable. You know, I didn't want to have to stress. It was yeah. was the ultimate goal. I just want to get to a place, you know, where by by playing guitar, I can have a non-stressful life. And you got to go through a lot of fucking stress to get to non-stressful. And I don't know if it's non-stressful now, but it is a lot more peaceful and you can get there. But I don't, you know, it's not a mansion, it's not, you know, some those that happens for some guys. Yeah. Probably those guys we're talking about. 
Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And there is a corporate part to music too, just like yeah. everything else. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. There's the corporate uh, cover bands are amazing, man. Like I want that fucking job. They pay those guys so much money to fucking go play cover songs Fuck and just a, have dude. a clean haircut at the same time. Yep, yep. It's uh, it's when, pretty funny, man. Dude, when I when I <laughs> when I first moved to this town, I had just left Nextel, I'm working for a comp- for a corporation, uh, uh, and and I made almost double that doing corporate work mm-hmm. the very next year just in Vegas. Yeah, you know, you did, and when I first moved here, you could do that, and I, I, I assume you can do it again. Maybe I'm just not in the circle anymore. But at that time, man, I was oh, yeah. fucking in it. You know, the, the old, some of the older guard was coming out. I had got here at just the right time, where you know, before. Before I got here, right before the rest of California figured out that, and especially the musicians in LA figured out, fucking Vegas. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. So I already worked myself into the click before everyone else got here. Yeah, it was a that was a good call, man. There was a wave of uh, the LA uh, '80s rock musicians just pouring into town. You know. Oh yeah, man. This is a, getting a little the, revival in that '80s rock wave. That whole generation, you know, became. Uh, you watch it happen, right? Like oh, yeah. when I moved to town, oh, yeah. it was the '70s era generation. Totally, yeah. When they I, had the money, they had the 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 the, uh, the time and the the expense to fucking uh, just go out and party their asses mm-hmm. off, and they were willing to do it. And now mm-hmm. it's the '80s generation slowly turning into the '90s. Now to the '90s generation, I know, honestly. dude. There's a lot of grunge ones going on yeah. now. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've seen. St- I'm still waiting for like, uh, I'm still waiting for it to be socially acceptable to play like the Sex Pistols in like a grocery store. That's Maybe when you maybe. know. That's when you know. That's when I'll know. I'm like, oh, old. <laughs> but that you don't see that happen that's the cool thing about them and some of that music right like i yeah. and, and i've experienced this playing it in mandalay bay and also at carnival court that um you know the band i was in we used to do p- some pistols tunes and uh when we, and it, it's awesome still to this day if you play pistols you can see the fear in certain people just from the sound of it. I mean, because you got to remember, man, I've spent, you know, I've, I've been doing this since I was 16 years old, 53, like I said. I have spent my entire life being one of five people facing the opposite way of everyone else. Yeah. I see everything, dude. Everything. And it's so funny to watch people's faces when certain shit. I've seen kids, like, get hip to rock and roll for the first time. You can see it in their eyes, like, oh, f-, you know, all of a sudden, Fuck you! I want you know. Yeah, it's it's awesome, dude. It's really cool. And in that aspect, and it's funny, I'm having this thought now because I'm sitting here thinking to myself, going, "Wow, that's really a cool thing." Yeah, I guess it is a cool thing. You know, I never saw it like that, but it's true. When did that happen to you, my friend? When did which part happen? When were you a kid who got hip to rock and roll and said, "Fuck yeah, well, this is what I'm doing with my life." I was very fortunate, man. I I I I am one of the blessed ones that that was that was uh, uh given a very uh good family so like uh not a, a lot not a lot of rules on me necessarily and um and they were very they either well one you can look at it like they didn't give a shit or two you can look i mean I and mean, i'm not saying that but i'm saying i was allowed to become me and uh and the family uh who i hung out with uh, the Cannons, uh, Jimmy Cannon taught music at uh, uh, the high school, and then on, on weekends uh, he would gig down at the Holiday Inn. He was a horn player, but at that time I didn't know anything about music, so like I was just always tripping out my friend, like going like, "Hey man, why does your fucking dad leave at like nine o'clock at night and doesn't get home till like fucking four in the morning? Like that's fucking weird. Like my old man is fucking up at six o'clock. Yeah. He's fucking home at five o'clock. There better be fucking dinner on there. No, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And and once again, I'm overacting. Pop up was pretty chilly. It wasn't like that, but like it tripped me out. Like he always tripped me out, and his mom played flute and like. Cannon played drums and like his brother played trumpet and his sister played piano and I'm just like, fuck, this is pretty heavy, you know. Like I don't have any of that in my family. No one does that. So then uh, it was mostly through that one family that just kind of made me go, oh, I kind of dig this. And then rock and roll hit me. That was the other thing I'm blessed with. Like uh, I'll, just, I'll sum this up in a joke. Like. Uh, uh, a friend came over and goes, man, aren't, doesn't your fucking parents get pissed that you listen to the fucking Beatles out loud? And I go, dude, that is my parents. <laughs> you know, like my, bad, my dad's favorite song was Come Together, you know? Like, I had a very hip family. I mean, it's, it's weird, man, because, like, 
like their my old man was in like the Korean War and my mom was born in like 34 and I mean so they're like they're, she's 85 now I have there's 11 years difference between me and my next sibling so I had this weird life where like I have brothers and sisters but like I grew up with them when I was a kid and then they were gone so like I was also an only child in like my high school years so I had you know I had the best of both worlds in that aspect and and being allowed to to grow up like that but they explained to me totally different parents you know they explained like we got fucking grounded for leaving fingerprints on the toaster and i'm like fuck man by the time i came around i was like hey don't use the china for heroin (laughs) 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 oh Oh, that's fucking great man fucking hell Good times, dude. That's, yeah, that's dude. cool. So it's reminiscing about shit. I don't know what the fuck we're yeah. talking about. I think that fucking that <laughs> thing I was smoking just kicked in. Good. That's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to keep you up and having a good old time, man. Yeah. If I could. I'm going to sip right now, folks, because that's that cotton mouth, son. Got that cotton mouth. Fucking, uh, yeah, and uh, continuing on that route, man, I'm actually seriously curious. What was your uh, what was your first band like, man? What, would, what did you do for your first band? My first band to start it off with was a uh just a garbage three piece uh yeah. where we only knew a couple metallica songs Fuck yeah. and so we called it dysenteria yeah. and i got stuck singing because i was the only one who could actually play and sing at the time so, <laughs> so lo and behold i become the fucking singer uh, of the of the band it nice. was awful yeah awful. Yep, yep. thankfully we never played a show thankfully facebook wasn't a thing and there is no proof that it ever happened besides that story i just told nice I, I uh, let's see. I had a, a the very first band was a uh, and this is a, this was another uh, power trio, uh, but I didn't have a drum set at the time because I started off as a drummer, and uh, um, so I had like chairs and shit set up and pots and pans and fucking the way you do it right, and uh, and then I had a, a guitar laying around. Uh, no, it was my guitar. No, it was the other kid's guitar, and. Uh, um, and then we wrote this song, and then we're fucking jamming it. What are we gonna call the band, man? We're gonna call the band the Detours, right? Whatever, dude. And then, like, someone fucking tuned the guitar one day, and the band had to break up because we couldn't play that song anymore. <laughs> 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 that's legit. That's legit. So, um, uh, but no, my very first, like, uh, uh, band that I would, you know, between uh, me and this guitar player used to jam a lot. And um, and then I played in a band on drums called uh, Doten Hex. And it was all, like, heavy fucking metal back in the 80s. And then and then that band called uh, Hydra, and that was pretty bad. I was playing guitar by then. But the reason I went from, there's a good story, the reason I went from uh, drums to guitar, and I like drums. I, con- I considered myself a drummer for a long time. And, uh, and the reason I went to guitar is I had a buddy who uh, met at a party, and we started talking, and he was pretty cool. And, uh, and the next day he came to my house and picked me up, and we went over to Bob's. This is, like, you know, uh, high school time. And uh, picked me up, took me over to Bob's Big Boy, and we had coffee. And he's like, hey, man, I want you to play with my band. And I'm like, yeah, man, that's cool, man. Uh, uh, I said, but you have a drummer. He goes, no, man, I want you to play guitar. And I go, but I'm a drummer. And he goes, yeah, but, man, but you look like a guitar player. <laughs> and that was it, man. That was all it took. That was it. Guitar from that day forward. Oh shit, that is great. Yeah, no, I was I wanted to be Neil Peart and Tommy Lee and the rest of those other guys I was watching. I mean, I loved the guitar because I was already. I mean, I had considered myself a drummer. I was dabbling in guitar. You know, I could make chords and I could do things and I could play like the Molly Crew records. But I didn't consider myself a guitar player until I was in a band playing guitar. Right. Yeah. So here's my opportunity, and I get in there and find out, hey, I'm even a little bit better than the guitar player. You know. So it was awesome. Awesome. Actually, that makes me uh, remember I, I, uh, my very first band. I take it back. My brother's going to be pissed at me for saying that. Other band. <laughs> my brother and I had a deal, right? Like, we both had acoustic guitars, and we're learning how to fucking play guitar. Yep. Uh, and we're hustling, like, lawn service and whatever the fuck we can do to make money. So the fucking deal is whoever gets the money together first to get an electric guitar and right. an amplifier nice. is the guitar player for the band. Legit. Get your shit together. You want to be the lead guitar player. Let's do this. Game on. And I forget I forget what he did. I'm going to hit him up about this. <laughs> uh, yeah, but that motherfucker, he beat me to it. Just just barely beat me to the punch and showed up at home. I, he must, I think he sold something or something. Like, he showed up, like, the next day. Nice. He had a plan nice. when he made the deal. The next nice. day, he had a fucking amp and a guitar. And uh, I got stuck I, uh, being the bass player, which, thankfully, I love playing bass. It was a great, you yeah. know, a great little turn of fate. I got me a fake Samick 
uh, Music Man replica. Wow. Uh, uh, at least I had, I had taste back then still when I was a kid. But we, I don't remember the name of the band, but we had, uh, I only remember one song, and it was called Dog Shit Tacos. And Dog that was the, shit tacos. that's all I remember. That's all I remember. We played little combo amps. Kids. Uh, fucking uh, kids. We rode bikes with our guitars with backpack like guitar bags right we would ride our fucking bikes to his friend's house who had a drum set love it they go play in a band love it you know it's funny when you're saying when you were saying bass like i'm kind of well known as a bass player too which is yes which i want to talk about that because start off as a drummer went to guitar player and the reason i got into bass and you're gonna love this reason i got into bass is um uh we i had quit one band or me and a couple other guys mutinied a band and I thought, guitar players are a fucking dime a dozen. I'll play bass, and we'll get ourselves a guitar player, right? And that's what we did. But, to, but I really didn't have any concept about bass. Like, drumming and guitar just seemed to come very natural to me. But, like, you know, what makes a samba a samba? What makes the, you know, why is, what, where, where is the bass lay in music? What's it doing that makes it different? Than, so I had to go study that shit, right? And, uh, and one of my, my albums I, was, I, I really dissected was uh, Double Fantasy from uh, uh, John Lennon because Tony Levin's on that. And what he does really makes songs happen. So I learned, so I always tell people, I go, the, everything else came very natural to me. I actually had to work on bass. Yeah. I had to master it. But now I love it because it incorporates the other two guys, guitar and drums, totally drums. And, but there's, there's a, its own element, too. You know, it's, you know, dude, I'm... I'm a lifer. I take this shit seriously. It's that. Hey, you want to discuss tambourines, motherfucker? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's totally that element that uh, that ties it all together, man. That mm -hmm. it, it completes the rhythm section and brings the key to it yeah. and ties it together with the guitars and the, the key keyboards and the, the the lead section. You know, it's it's a crucial element. It's it, when it's not there. Oh, dude, it is fucking. It's noticeable. missing. Yeah, it's when it is there, you yeah. almost don't even notice it's there because it's just this glue that holds the whole piece together. Safety net. Yeah. You know, if you're playing guitar part guy, or for me, if I'm playing guitar part guy. I need the safety net. I mean, that's why I, I like Jones so much because Jones and I, I'm, fuck, I've known him since he was 18. I mean, like, you know, Jones and I have just, I've known him forever. So, and I've worked with him forever. So, like, we read certain things just because we've been doing it so long. And most, and we spend a lot of time as a, just a duo, too. You know, we play in the upright and I'm doing my thing. So, um, uh, fuck, where was I going with this? Jones, bass. Glue. Glue. That motherfucker. Now, him. Safety net. Safety net. That guy. I can I, I know if I fall apart, it'll never fall apart because he'll anticipate me falling apart and already pick me up. And the way my mind works, sometimes you need that. Oh, you, you have know? to. But then like a guy like Michael Lersick and Corky Gainsford, that guy, that's a, those two guys are a whole different anyway. So be, in you, when I played with you and Michael that one time, there's a whole different, you know, and you can tell the guys are like, fuck it, dude, they've got their own little thing and it all sounds different. It's a big net as a guitar player. As a bass player, personally, I want to be that guy. Yeah. So like I so if you if I'm backing you up, and this works with guitar too, if I'm backing you up, rest assured, man, my goal is is I'm watching you and I'm trying to make I'm trying to make you shine. You know? Yeah. Because that's really what that's it what is. It, yeah, I mean, and for those you know who don't get it, or my philosophy is, music is this, and especially bands, and actually you could probably put it to anything. It, when it is your time to shine, fucking shine on. And when it's not, step the fuck back and let the other guy shine. Oh, and yeah. there's a huge musicians who don't understand that rule at all. Dude, you're stepping all over everything. No, dude, that's my all over everything. Everything. I, and I'm notorious for that, no. <laughs> I remember uh, one of my favorite Vegas bass players, Wicked Pickett, got on stage yeah. at a jam night. Yeah. One of the Zito jams. And, uh, and we did, like, dueling basses. And the fucking the part that everyone was fucking get, getting our shit about is because we were both riding the backbone of it, and we were like having we were just like all right you go you know you, right. you, 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 you they were like fucking uh, take longer solos guys like we were just like you know we would take like eight measures and be like we're the bass player right and they were just like I do <laughs> yeah yeah and, and we were both trying to be professional at the fucking jam and fucking do what you're supposed to do and everyone was just like no 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 just fucking break all the rules come on you guys gotta get it. Jesus, man. Fuck yeah. I, I haven't... There's a bunch of... Ah, fuck. 
I'm just such an anti-social, man. I don't know what the fuck that is. But there's, plus my ears just all the damn time. So I just can't. I would love to go to those things, like an open jam. I'd love to fucking go to the Zito Jam or something like that. But like, if I gotta sit there and it is, you know, it just did. I'm gonna, get, I can't make it. So uh, plus, I just fucking don't want, you know, trying to, trying to. T- Here's the other problem I have because my hearing does suck. So if I'm in a crowd, a group of crowded people, and someone's trying to talk to me. I don't know what the fuck they're saying because all I'm hearing is shah, 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 right. Oh, yeah. So then, so then I stare at them kind of dumbly. You know, and then I don't know what I can't. Um, this is not my thing, and I don't want to look like a dick, so I'm just not gonna hang out here, I guess. Because you get that too, right? That guy's uh, a fucking dick. Well, yeah. No, dude, I'm just having a really difficult time with all this fucking noise. You know, because I grew up in it. You grew up in it. You know, and there's yeah. a bunch of cats who. I mean, we were talking earlier that you were starting to feel the age. Because it'll creep up on you, right? It does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You let me know, and I hope it doesn't hit you in a long time, but you let me know when getting the milk out of the fridge requires a noise. Because <laughs> that shit will sneak up on you. But that's what I'm saying, man. You grow up into that, and that's what you're into, you know? And it's just fucking all the time. Ah! Ah! You know, and, and you wear the protection, but that doesn't. That really doesn't do the trick, yeah. especially especially because well, maybe now these younger kids we're talking about because the older cats have gone through it, and I'm telling you something to them ear condoms, but um, <laughs> there they are the condom man they take away the feeling no, hey look at that that's pretty profound the- no, anyway but um, yeah that's what it is so you, so maybe they don't have that anymore but it, by the time you start wearing the, the guys to help the fucking damage is done man yeah you know yeah. Yeah. By the time you realize that you're like, oh, I should probably be wearing fucking hearing protection. It's yeah. like you already have mild tinnitus and you're going, you know, yeah, yeah. I got to keep the fucking TV on when I go to sleep. I, you know, yeah. I'm just listening well, I'll to my totally. own ears ring. Yeah, yeah. I kind of, yeah. I got the, the, the ocean. Ocean noise is yeah. nice. Yeah. yeah. Kind of fits right in when they're with the tones. At least my tones are like in key. Yeah. Like I don't have those ones because every now and then I'll get one that comes in that really loud that uh, doesn't jive yeah. with the other ones. And I'm always like, are you going to leave <laughs> or are you going to stick around? You know, they just all like, Whoa! like, fuck off. Oh, yeah. yeah. I know exactly what you mean, yeah. man. Yeah. Eventually those loud ones end up walking away, but it's like, fuck, yeah. they stick around for a long time. I fucking hate my tinnitus so yeah. much. Uh, yeah. It's and then really I, frustrating. I hear caffeine is good for it, too. Oh yeah, yeah uh, caffeine yeah. fucks your tinnitus all no, around. No, no, it's good for it. It, may, it helps, helps. Oh, it helps. It. Helps. Yeah. Oh, and here yeah. I am trying to fucking quit caffeine, and you're oh, telling me it's going to help my tinnitus. No, no, stick with those espressos stick you got, it. dude. I'll chug those espressos yeah, more. Yeah, yeah totally. it's good. <laughs> See, babe, it's good for my tinnitus. You know, exactly. Just, for me going through six espressos a day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now check the way I tie this in, bro. You're going to love this. Boom. Back to Vegas. So, you were saying it was all 70s, right? Yeah. So, when I got to this town, like, here, the bands who ruled the fucking Vegas was, like, Wonder Boogie and, like, the original Cats. Yeah. Right? And then I don't think they had become a franchise, or maybe they were a franchise already. I don't know how that all worked. But those guys owned the place. Love Shack owned the place, right? Then, then like, I was working Carnival when I saw the shift come. You know, I, like all of a sudden, uh, it was a bit, and I'll, I'll totally give it to the Crashers, you know, which is uh, Frankie and Michael Vassos and Terry and a bunch of these other cats. And you people may know them or may not. But these guys, like I was doing a punk rock thing. These guys came in with metal. Like they were playing like Iron Maiden at like Carnival Court in a time where, you know, ooh, ooh, that's my shit. Bananas crap, you know, and fucking what are you going to do hot in here? And, and, you know, that that's all that was played in Vegas. All. Yeah. I was fucking nudging the thing doing the punk rock thing, but it was <laughs> Sunday night late. So, like, there was a certain audience that, that that appeals to. And that's okay with me. I don't need to appeal to a grand audience. I would really rather play to the people who really want to fucking be there right so that's what we do we play this then these motherfuckers come in and they play like i and the mother and they take my gig <laughs> my gig with metal right but but i totally give uh um uh, uh carnival court and the guy who was running it at that time was a guy by the name of keith keith and uh keith and michael vassos and the rest of the crashers brought metal into the mainstream again in vegas and i saw it happen you know, I was like, fucking, wow, everyone's getting off on this. All of a sudden, boom, oh, here's another metal band. Boom, there's another metal band. Boom, there's, you know, like all of a sudden everyone's playing metal. And it was like, wow, that's cool. I never thought it would go that way. I was still trying to, I was trying to sneak punk in through the back door by playing like, you know, Clash and shit. You right. know, and just trying to get in that way. I'm like, 
Fuck no, Iron Man, boom. There's my dick. Give me, your, give me your job. <laughs> <laughs> Now, when I came to town, it was a totally different trip, right? You had to have, like, 15 fucking guys in the band, and no one's really doing anything except yeah. for, like, one guy who's, like, really playing saxophone, you know? Like, it's just, like, weird shit, you know? I've seen some of those corporate acts where there's, yeah. you know, there's you guys fucking, working a fucking 20 people machine. in the band, 10 yeah. of them are dancers. There's, like, an actual rhythm section, but, like, the majority of everybody's just dancing around the whole time, and there's, like, fucking six singers, and yeah. they all suck. Yeah, there's a, uh, I'm not going to throw, I'm not going to mention the name, but this is a actual, this actually happened one night. So before they, before uh, Mandalay Bay changed, um, that eye candy thing before that before that was eye candy it used to be called the island lounge i had a house gig in there and um and one night i got done playing the early shift i went and got a beer and i sat down and it was pretty crap you know packed it was probably like a friday night or something like that and it's pretty happening that place used to get pretty hopping and um i'm just having a beer uh, sitting at a table and uh and i see brad whitford walk in the door right and no one fucking knows it's Brad Whitford, right? Nobody. Nobody, right? Because they only know fucking Joe Perry and the other guy, Steve Tyler. And uh, uh, <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> anyway, so fucking Bradford comes over and he kicks back the up against guy. the wall, right? And when uh, I see him, you know, I just kind of like, hey, man, you want to sit down? You know, yeah, man. So he sits down and I'm just kind of hanging there with him. We really don't say anything. And people are kind of like coming up and like, oh, man, great set, man. Oh, good player. Blah, 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 blah. Not even aware a legend is sitting next to me, right? <clears throat> we hang out a little bit and whatnot, and finally I break the ice. Oh, no, he breaks the ice, and he goes, so you play guitar? I go, yeah, man, I just did a set. I just got done. I said, are you, uh, you, know, you in town for business or pleasure? And he goes, uh, business. And I go, where? He goes, across the street, MGM. I went, cool. And, no, no, that's not how I said it. I said, I said, cool. And I go, who's your opener? He goes, Lenny Kravitz. And I go, oh, really? So, you know, something like, the, like, 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 really? Like, hey, what? Wait, you want to go? And that's what I'm hoping for. No, that yeah. never happens. That never happens. That never happens. But uh, we sit and we talk about it, and, um, and we start dissecting the act that is in front of us, right? And uh, Dat Machine, no one's playing live. And, and, and he's pointing these things out to me, and I'm going, yeah, no, 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 bro. It's, it's deeper than that. It's deeper. I said, check the shoes. Everyone's the same height. You know, I mean, this is this is a premeditated thing that's going on here, totally. And he was just like, uh, uh, he's like, wow, crazy, blah, blah, blah. And uh, we got to talk anyway. And he, he always made me feel good because I remember because I think about this a lot, whenever I think about getting up and going back out on the road or some shit like that. He goes, uh, he goes, no, man, you do it right. You get to sleep in your own bed at night. And I've st and I that's really kind of stuck with me that sleep in my own bed at night. Yeah, you know, it's worth a lot. It's worth it's priceless. It's yeah. priceless. I, I often get asked when I go out and play sometimes, I've actually p had people say this to me. They go, man, when's it going to happen for you? And I go, well, ha what's, what's what? happening? I'm doing exactly what I want to do, and I'm Sinatra about it. I do it from Vegas. Yeah. You know? I mean, yeah. So it cracks me up sometimes. It also cracks me up sometimes the way that people perceive me. You know, it's kind of like yeah. blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, dude, I'm just a guy who plays guitar. I don't know what the fuck. I'm just trying to pay bills. Or the way people perceive success. Right. You know, right. like you are a successful musician right. who pays his own way by playing guitar in the entertainment capital of the world. Am I yeah. I always, wrong about something there? Right. Right. And everyone's like, when you make it, it's like, motherfucker, you've yeah. done made it. Yeah. You've been hanging out and made it for a long time, man. Yeah. I and mean, you're living the fucking dream. Yeah. I even spent two years underneath that name Rat. You know, I was, you know, was playing great. fucking arenas. So I would say that, you know, if, if you might want to put it this way, put it this way. One night, and I'm never going to forget this either. One night, I'm looking over at the drummer. I'm not going to say his name because, I, one, I don't like him, and two, <laughs> To it, I don't get fucking sued or any shit like that. So, uh, so uh, dude, that that dude and his lawyer man were such punks. So, um, anyway, I'm looking at that motherfucker getting the count off. Coon got my fucking count off. We're locked in. I don't need to look at you anymore. And I turn around, and fucking the whole stadium has got their their iPhones out. Yeah. With the flashlights on them, and they're holding yeah. them up and they're swaying them, dude. Instead when you're, of lighters. Yeah, when you're up there and you turn around and see that against black, and it's just fucking. You know, forever, it's awesome, dude. It's huh? like it's like turning around and, and looking into space. It's yeah, it's like you know, you just turn around and I, and I was so like dumbfounded by it. It was kind of like, 
wow i mean this is like what every you know rock star kid dreams of you know yeah. if you want to be paul stanley this is the moment you want right and for a while there i wanted to be paul stanley but then i started looking at the other guys on the album i'm like yeah but who's this motherfucker and who's this guy and who's this guy and who's all these guys who actually play on this fucking record who are these you know i want to be these guys yeah you know and that's where uh like a guy like uh Steve Lukather has always been one of my heroes. Like, no one really knows Luke, but the cats who know him, they fuck, and there's a respect that comes with that, you know? Like, you're not going to go up a star fuck Luke. Yeah. You know, you're just going to hey, well, and he's going to hey, man, you know, and it's going to be fucking cool, you know? So, and he can walk down the street, and I've always admired that, these cats who, like, the actual cats on the record that no one knows, who get to have a life, sleep in their own bed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they don't go out and have to. And, and there's other cats. Maybe that's what those other cats are for. They're the cats that go out and fucking do the tour. Yeah. There you go. It's that and that alone. I mean, that that touring life is a rough lifestyle. That is Fuck, not dude. glamour no. at all ever. No. It is fucking. It's 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 just uncomfortable the whole time. Yeah. And you get this. 90 minutes of glory yeah. and then you know 22 hour and, and a half hours of not glory yeah sitting yeah. in a bus or a hotel room eating shitty food not yeah. getting to work out yeah sleeping in a crap bed oh dude you you know, lucky if you get a shower with, yeah hanging out with smelly ass motherfuckers yep. you know what i mean I, it's I, just like that the, I, I, <sighs> there's something funny how uh people think that's some glamorous lifestyle yeah uh, you know i mean it's furthest, cool furthest thing from it I, well, I mean, I, I'm not going to dog. Well, I can't really dog it because I just did one, you know, like a year ago, a year ago, like this month or a year ago last month. We did the uh, that we uh, I don't want to name names because I don't know if I'm going to upset anybody. But yeah, I mean, you do. the Yeah, I'll do it this way. You do the research. You can figure it out. So uh, last year, uh, the D.O. Returns was going across the planet. Right. And um, then I was part of the opening act. So I got to do the tour and I got to do the bus and I got to find out that my brother died. And I had to deal with that on that bus with all these fucking people. With all, you know, they don't, no one gets that shit, right? Locked in a little fucking bunk, you know, because I'm done way before everyone else. We're talking about a fucking hologram show. We're there early in the morning. These motherfuckers set up. They got to set that shit up. Then they got to fucking sound check the fucking band who's, you know, make sure that shit's all lined up with the technology that's going on. Then they might have some time for us and they did and we get up there and we get our sound check sometimes we get a stage sometimes we don't it all depends on the venue but pretty much i'm done at fucking 8 30 9 o'clock now i've had all day to wait and now i got all night to wait so these guys can tear all that fucking shit down load that shit back up in the fucking van and off we go and i don't drink that much and i ain't looking for chicks and i ain't looking for drugs and i've seen the show and my ears are what they are so i get to spend a lot of time in a little fucking coffin bunk i'm yeah. not gonna bitch about it that's the gig you know i got paid to do this you know but but people who think that's fucking glamorous well it's not for me yeah. you know and it's like sp and speaking okay yeah go ahead see your piece i was gonna say it's like hedge uh headfield's back in rehab again oh yeah you know yeah. because yeah. Well, they go out on the road and you're stuck there and you just Dude, go right it, what I, else is there to do right when, exactly. when you're an addict exactly in that environment which most of them are you, and you, you get know, into, and it, you get it, it, into that it's so easy to fall into and you get into it because you have nothing but time nothing but time i gotta kill time i gotta kill i have a tattoo on my arm which is a hula girl i got it in wolverhampton uh england uh because i i, I was trying to kill time you know i something to do yeah. fuck a tattoo shop you know, boom, walk down there. Didn't even think about it, dude. I walked right up to the fucking guy. I pointed at a Sailor Jerry poster on the wall. I go, I want that hula girl right there, right? No color. Christian Brady was, 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 was with me. <laughs> we were trying to kill time. Christian and I were trying. We, shit, man, we, I think we signed up to get one of those old-timey shaves and a haircut. Oh, nice. You know, just because like, we wanted something to do. Now, here's what, uh, anyway, I'm going to, I'm going to go take a smoke break, but I'm going to bring it back really quick. You wanted, uh, I, you have a thing for the smoke break. I, I think. do have a thing for the smoke break. Uh, wh which was the one we were going to show first? Uh, special plate. Perfect. Cause I'm, okay. Now check this out. Here's, I'm going to set this up. So what I was saying about this being trapped in this little thing, um, uh, the, the greatest part about this is I wrote this song about that, my special place. My, you know, this is where I'm supposed to wait. This is where I'm supposed to be. This is what and And I was thought, and anyway, point being, after what we've all just gone through, 
everyone can identify with the song now because that's that's kind of what living on the road is like. You just kind of like stay someplace. You really don't have to get to go anywhere, and if you do, it's to Walmart. Yeah. You know, or maybe you're lucky enough to fucking maybe you camp out at Walmart overnight. <laughs> I've done that. You, yeah. know, you know what I'm saying, dude? Like had a day off, and, and, and what I got to look at was a huge fucking parking lot. You know, hot as fuck outside, fucking everyone just getting fucking hammered drunk. And I, I, I guess that's cool, maybe, but I'm not going to front. I don't think it's cool, yeah. dude. It fucking sucks. You get to go see the world, man. Yeah, like a fucking itch at a time, man. <laughs> Can we fucking get to the highlight? Anyway, so uh, right now, uh, here's Special Place. I made this video. It's off my album, uh, 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 The Doc Recordings. You can get it on uh, docellis.com. And now, right now, I'm going to go to my special place, which is to go have a cigarette while you watch me in my special place, my $250 fucking jacuzzi. <laughs> Yeah, it's so much fun. Thank you. 
<laughs> See, man. See, man. So I was telling, I was telling Jay uh, before when he was doing that. He's, I walked in from having a smoke, and he goes, "Dude, you're such a dork." I go, "I, I, go, I, go, I am, man. I really am." Um, but uh, it was telling Jay. It was like, "Yeah, dude. I, was, I just got the master for that." And I was sitting in my special place in the pool, and I was thinking about everybody having to wait at the time. We just every because no one knew what the fuck was going on, and everyone was just waiting. And um, and it was like, man, I, I think everyone will finally understand what the hell I'm talking about with this, you know. And here I wait in my special place. So, anyway, that was my special place. Grabbed the phone, made that short little, what it's been called, a. Uh, uh, Quarn quarantine video or something like that. I don't know. Someone called it that. Anyway, so that was it. That was it. That was it. What are you doing? That was a fantastic video. I am uh, hanging out with some of this orange peel over here, getting into the uh, second half of the uh, podcast. Uh, you know what I mean? We're going to make it a little more relaxed. <coughs> <coughs> Ooh, fantastic. Fan friggin' tastic. I like smoke. that stuff. Yes, oh. holy smoke indeed. Holy smoke indeed. All right. Big old fucking hooter. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll, t we'll talk about that little magical guy there for a second. <coughs> to a uh, to a crazy person like me, <coughs> that stuff uh, has really uh, uh, helped my life and benefited me in many ways. And uh, and my biggest uh, argument would be for uh, marijuana use would be. Uh, and I used to be quite a booze hound, and uh, and you will never hear these words come out of my mouth when I'm smoking marijuana. What the fuck did you just say? No shit. That will never happen when I'm smoking marijuana. However, you get a couple of beers in me and you start talking the wrong game. I'm gonna. I'm 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 looking for trouble. I'm never looking for trouble. Trouble finds me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's uh it's 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 definitely uh the most harmless su mind altering substance you can get your hands on, I'd imagine. Uh it's it's saved more people than I can fucking count, man. It, it helped me with my addictions, yeah. it helps a lot of friends with their addictions yeah. and you know, it's uh it's just a wonder drug. It helps so many people <laughs> out with so many medical conditions. It's true, man. It's and, true. Yeah. And it's just <coughs> my mother delicious. <coughs> my my uh 85 year old mother uh has got knee problems and uh when i was out on that <coughs> excuse me <laughs> <laughs> when i was out hold on let me get my chich and chong on when i was out on that tour man no uh when i was out on that tour um jasbo and i uh we found a, a shop uh, and the ladies there were selling this um marijuana cream uh that uh was supposed to have the miracle drug out of the cdb or whatever it is cbds uh, that's it and uh and I have a, a bursitis in my knee. Uh, it's either that or I have torn ligaments from the way that I stand when I play, or I'm not sure. Uh, I've seen pictures. I'm like, oh, I don't think knees are supposed to bend like that. But anyway, so I've got this big knot in my knee that bugs me constantly. Uh, and as I get older, it's constantly going, hey, 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 you know, just constantly. Anyway, so I put this stuff on my knee, and I'm talking to Jasbo, and within minutes, like, as I'm talking to him, I go, oh, my God, I can't feel my knee. So I've used this stuff on my mother and her bad knees because she has no cartilage in between the, so it's bone on bone and she gets these shots, you know, very evasive, just fucking shot right in the yeah. fucking knee. And, um, and I rubbed this stuff on her knees and it helped. So I'm like, dude, I mean, I, give me your arguments all day long, dude. I have, I have proof that I've seen with my eyes and experienced myself. Yeah, it's yeah. a miracle drug, man. Yeah. It's an absolute miracle drug, man. I'm a, I'm, I, 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 like Mike Tyson likes to say, right? I'm a better person when I'm on it. You know, I'm I've, calmer. I have way more patience with people. I have a uh, higher fascination with the world. Yeah. Um, I'm more creative. You know, it, uh, and, you know it's and, just a, all kinds of things. All those things are true. And I'm sitting here go being, you know, the devil advocate that I am at heart. And I'm going, yeah, but, you know, that's just a fucking junkie's way of fucking saying, you know, oh, I like it when I'm better like this. I mean, yeah. you know, I can see someone saying that. But the way you just described it afterwards is is the way to describe it. And like, well, I'll tell you what. This. <laughs> yes, that I can't put it any better than that. Yeah, yeah. It, it's uh I, I don't think it's something like, uh, you know, people should be walking around half-baked all the fucking time, you know, or it's just pothead city. But uh, it's one of those good things where 
if I'm frustrated with something or if I'm upset with somebody or something in my life, usually it's a good idea to take two seconds and smoke yeah. a joint about it. Yeah. Real quick, make sure that it's actually important and worth being upset over because a lot of times... It's not. You forget what the fuck you're even mad about. It's not. And you're just like, oh, yeah, I was. Why was I even upset about that thing in the first place? That's silly. Yeah. That's a silly thing to be upset about. But you get lost in your own uh, brain chemistry, man. Yeah. Oh, totally. And And, and, and sometimes it's nice to have a little help. I I like that you said brain chemistry because one of the things that uh, when I had my, well, what I thought was a breakdown, I had uh, gone to see a um, um, a therapist because I could have, I just couldn't. I could not not cry all the time, right? I don't know what that is. You so, needed to cry, man. Apparently. So, like, I go in there and I talk to this lady, and, and the very first thing that happens is I walk in, it's just, so what's going on? Because I've left her pretty fucking detailed, broken down, you know, like, man, I am fucking, I am worried about my damn self. So uh, I get in there, and uh, she goes, what's your problem? I immediately start just fucking crying. And I go, this, man, what the fuck is this, you know? So we get in there, and anyway... After the first talk, she had said s- several things that I thought was amazing, and I had never seen life like this. One, when she told me that my brain was a computer, yes. and all I fucking do is drive it and drive it and drive it and drive it, and I never cool it down, never. And I went, oh, really? Like, th- like what? And then she goes, oh, yeah, and you're not crazy. As a matter of fact, you're very enlightened. And I liked that word so much, I had to look it up. So, since since that and that led me on a journey. Just you know, it was going to see that lady. And by yeah. the way, I was even a fucking dick then. She's like, I'm like, so how long do you think this is gonna fucking take? She goes, Well, you know, you're fucking, you'll be done with like four sessions. I'm like, four? Fuck, I'll do it in three. Ha! <laughs> and I did. Yeah. Uh, but um, I mean, you know, I've had other guys tell me during that time. Say, I think fucking, they just tell you what you want to hear. Hey, Amen. Whatever the fuck it is, it worked. You know, if it's a placebo pill, if it works, it works, you know. No, therapy's a super important part. And you know, discussing <clears throat> what's going on in your head with another person who's yeah. taking enough time uh, to give a shit about what's going on in your head and yeah. didn't talk to you about it, yeah. that's really important, man. And it's, so it's one of those uh, stigmas in our society that uh, I, I should not be looked down upon. You're right. I actually, uh, I'm looking for a new therapist right now, not because... I feel bad, but because I feel great. Right. And I, I look at it as a personal trainer for my mind because my mind is something that I have to focus. My mind is something that I have to work on. And I'm just, I want someone that, uh, you know, can teach me some new things, that can teach me new, some new skills, some new meditation techniques, yeah. and um, some new ways to um, observe my thought processes as they come to me. True. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, th- therapy is just such a great thing, man. It, and, and everybody should be going and seeing therapists and, and, and doing things therapeutically you right, know right like meditating Meditating's i always a good tell one, people man. to meditate and they, you know that nobody wants to listen to just, that shit just you know and, w- and what led me down that path was um uh i was uh, anyway i'm not gonna get into that part but just but breathing breathing plus cliches have always been a thing with me like cliches like why is it cliche to say i mean wh- why is that i just find that whole thing fascinating cliche like so um I'm, I'm watching this thing and somehow it leads to a, a breathing this guy's telling me about breathing and uh it never even just dawned on me to sit and breathe and, yeah. and, and think about breathing and focus and, on and, and if and if you and and for those of you who have never just done that you would be amazed at where that alone will lead you You're just the- breathing and focusing on it it will lead you into all kinds of places that you never even dreamed you were you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. No, I like to, um, uh, a fun exercise is to focus on your breath, mm-hmm. but not to control your breath. Mm. Uh, because it's not really possible. Mm-hmm. And so your your goal is to be aware of it, but don't control it. Yeah. Every time you become aware of it, you start to control your breath. It's this balance yeah. that you play with your mind and your body. Uh, a way of getting into that um, state of meditation mm-hmm. uh, where you can kind of be lost in your thoughts and observe your thoughts for what they are, you mm-hmm. know. Um, and that's it's a, a super healthy part of the day, man. I, I, I didn't know what I was doing for so long. Yeah. 
And when I finally discovered it, and 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 that's it, the thing, right? It's like how it, to do it, it yeah. right? It's like that's not something that that you that that shit comes to you. Like you find yeah. that, and you usually find it like right at the right time, you know? Oh yeah, yeah. And and, and maybe there's an argument for that anyway. But but it's whatever. If this is crazy, if sitting around and concentrating on being a peaceful fucking human being, if and 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 not believing things that people don't tell me you know what i'm saying like like if you just if that's being crazy free thinking trying to be a peaceful person then sign me the fuck up because i've seen the other side the normal and it scares the fuck out of me (laughs) i always consider myself to be crazy like i just am comfortable with that terminology yeah call me fucking crazy because i uh i am interested in some ideas that might not exactly go with the norm and that might they might be false ideas, but that doesn't mean I'm going to uh, just dismiss them. Right. I'm going to venture into these things and and dig deep and see what right. the fuck's about it and believe it for a second. Just you know, throw it throw away my sense of doubt and see what happens when right. you go down these paths. Yeah. Um. And yeah. Uh, and then come back from them and and you know, reevaluate things. But that that seems crazy as shit to people right so yeah. so so here's here's the deal like you were saying look down upon so it, it, there is a kind of stigmatism or i mean i don't i don't know because there seems to be it, therapy you know you do that mm, uh aa mm, uh rehab mm, and i can find no fault in someone trying to better themselves i, I find yeah. no fault in that whatsoever so i don't know why that's <laughs> you know Hey, so and so is in fucking rehab. Shh, don't tell anybody. What? That he's trying to fucking get better. Yeah. You know, fucking be proud, man. Yeah. You know, fucking. I go to. I, I believe me. I've been to AA meetings. You know, and like, uh, uh, and there's two ways that that I've noticed this works. Right. <clears throat> One, you get the AA experience that I get, which is like. And I didn't even realize, like, I, the first time I went to AA, I went, I went in, su- in support. And, and, and when people started talking, I was like, fuck, I've done that. Fuck, I've done that. Fuck, I've done that. Fuck, I've done that. <laughs> fuck, I beat all you motherfuckers. And, um, and, and so, so, so I exactly. could never. So, so from me, when I started, like, going, fuck, man, maybe I need to, you know, reevaluate myself. Because here, I kind of had a judgment on this. And apparently, I am. So, because um, I just thought I was good at it. Right. You know, so um, uh, but anyway, so my experience was, you know, uh, when I pulled out of that and I haven't been in a while, but when I pulled out of that was um, uh, I can't fault these people or myself for trying to better myself. So that's what I'm going to do is better myself. Then I've seen the flip side of it where my uh, ex roommate uh, from a billion years ago would come home from a court ordered uh, fucking uh, AA meeting, fucking light up a joint and open a beer and go, those fucking people got problems. <laughs> <laughs> Denial, it's the easiest fucking path, man. Yeah, man. You, know, so. you can always just say, that's not me. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And yeah. it takes a lot. It takes a lot. I remember standing up in one of those fucking meetings and yeah. saying, you know, uh, my name's Jason Froberg, and I am an alcoholic. Uh, and AJ. It immediately, yeah. it fucking hits you like yeah. a wave, man. You're yeah. just like, fuck. You know, yeah, I, that felt really good. Yeah. It, it felt really good to say. And uh, it was just amazing. It was an amazing experience in my life. And uh, it gave me so much power. Right. Uh, I thought I thought it was weakness. And standing up and the whole, the whole time going to that point and going to say that kind of shit, right. you know, yeah, yeah. and admit to my own weakness. Mm-hmm. Uh, and all it did was give me strength. You know, that... That's an empowering thing to do. Right. And it's the first step that y- you need to take yeah, to totally. become a better person. Totally. And, and, you know, and, and as you're saying this, I'm thinking, you know, because I've had the same experience uh, in um, uh, AA that I've had in, um, in a music festival, that I've had at a church, that I've had, you know, it just like I've never went to those things and left feeling bad or like working out. You yeah. know, you know, or like meditating. Like I've never not done those things and had this great experience. Like I don't believe in fucking church and all this bullshit. But this one fucking day, I just happened to go to fucking church, and this dude said exactly what I needed to hear that day. You know. So at what point do we not combine all these experience in all these different things we call it and realize yeah. that it is a higher? You're getting 
higher you're, you're being downloaded a higher thing you know i agree or at least this is my experience and how i feel yeah no you're absolutely right man you know it's uh ah uh, just so many times that things come right when they need to be there mm-hmm. and uh who knows what the fuck that is man you know i can't yeah, I can't say. Yeah, you know, because I ain't, I, I ain't. It's peculiar, that's for sure. Yeah, I ain't necessarily wearing a fucking tie and going to a, a a fucking fashion contest every Sunday and for something that I, that that see that that shit never made sense to me, man. Because even oh look at me, man. Now I'm talking real shit. Like it, it like the middleman. <laughs> like why I gotta go look and listen to this guy when I want to fucking talk to the thing, you know? Like like why can't I just talk to the thing, man? So, you know, and all of a sudden, point being, yeah. when you're not looking, that thing start. Uh, not, not when you're not looking. When you're really looking, that thing shows you things. Yeah, when yeah. you create silence and space around yourself, mm-hmm. intention, yeah. you know, yeah. that's when you hear, th- that's when it's there. And, uh, you know, you can feel the, the presence of the universe and the energy of that. Mm-hmm. And really, it's just nice to be silent and in space it's just nice to be just to be yeah yeah it's a very pleasant thing and uh uh the more i do it the more i realize i need to do that more right and uh it always seems to make my day better just sitting in peace 15 minutes of just silence letting yourself be letting yourself just sit i know i love it in in an in a I mean, in a small portion of time, man, 15, that's all it takes, man. It's hell, it, 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 I could get just as mellow in five. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, it's it's very small time. And, like, and, and, when, and once again, when you kind of tell people that, they look at you like, oh, well, no. When you look at me like, yeah. when I just drop some fucking knowledge on you, <laughs> I feel the same fucking, you know, contempt. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm giving you the, all right, whatever. But you can't. It's not something you can give to somebody. Yeah. It's something somebody can ask for, but you can't give it away. And, uh, you know, everybody's at their own point in their own journey, I think, man. Yeah. You know, and sometimes yeah. it takes a lot longer for some per- people to even begin taking the steps in not just being this physical body eating and reproducing and surviving on the planet, but being a, an actual thoughtful, conscious being and a part of something more. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. And you know, and, and you know what got me to this headspace was questions. <laughs> yeah. You know, questions. Like, all the time. Like, wait, 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 wait. like the one that really kind of set me off was, uh, 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 it's in the Bible, and it's like, a, there were giants in those days. Yeah. And after. Dude, that phrase alone just made me go, whoa, 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 what, what the fuck is that? What's, what's that all about? And then you start looking at that shit. And then this is when people start going, oh, well, now you're all conspiracy. And why? Because I'm trying to fucking figure out what the fuck that meant. Yeah. You know, you know I'm, I'm nutty because I want to know what that meant. They wrote everything in there for a reason. Uh, right. But again, you start reading some of those books and it really seems like uh, some of the first documented like acid trips by white people. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like, holy shit, you wouldn't believe what I saw last night. Yeah. You know, I read today that uh, um, uh, that uh, uh, someone someone finally acknowledged that UFOs are a thing. And I'm like, dude, are we still fucking talking about that? Like, what? Yeah. What? Like, you know, and, and on the UFO thing, like, hey, man, I got questions on that, too. You know, military has got to be, I don't know, what, 15 years more technology advanced than what they're given to us, right? Because they got to be on top of their game. So, like, all this shit in the sky that's been going around for years, hey, man, how you know that ain't ours? You know? Well, well yeah. It could be fucking military shit that we don't know about. The stealth bomber. Like, I grew up, I went to high school in Lancaster, so Lockheed Martin was right there. And fucking, I used to see the stealth, you know? They fly that fucking thing. And the, when they finally unveiled it, you know, you, you know people like, oh. And I'm like, that thing alone probably 90 percent of ufo sightings you know because you see it, it's all fucking looks exactly like i'm not saying there is or ain't what i'm saying is it could be ours yeah 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 i think it's uh highly likely that it's something like that man uh 
where's where's the fucking real proof you know of of alien civilizations fucking from anywhere you know and there's nothing i mean there's there's weirdness there's strange videos yeah. every once in a while and but it's like where it, the 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 fucking yeah the navy is running into some these pills that they call them right uh-huh. have you seen the videos no what, there's what, what, some pretty cool shit though they they move uh way faster than anything should be able to move and uh interesting it's just shaped like a little pill and they're trying to track it and it's like oh no i did hear it's about like that. directly blocking their radar and and yeah it's it's a it's a very advanced vessel and it's using what they want to call or what you know what they're hinting to be like anti-gravity propulsion systems and they're not being rock propelled they're it's it's manipulating the gravity around the ship and moving the ship right through time and space uh, it's and that's fucking a, cool and stuff, that's a man. thing, dude. That's a, I mean, that's legit thing. I, the math works on that thing, you know. So like, if you use the, but from what I understand, I mean, I'm no fucking brainy guy, but uh, if from what I'm to understand, it, all the math adds up for that possibility to happen. So if we have that possibility, and I mean, dude, the thing, the thing that the humans do well is technology. That that's really God. I mean, that's what we made. We made technology, and now technology is just fucking so gnarly. Um, so, and I don't know where I was going with that, because I got off on five other different tangents over here. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that's, uh, that's just what we do, man. And that's just what we do. We're inclined to build technology. We're inclined to get bigger and cooler things, man. Like, I'm fucking super into it. You know, I yeah. want the latest and greatest shit, and I'm always interested in the newest technology. And it's just something that I'm driven to. Yeah too naturally um and i think as a species it's what we do you yeah, know yeah, yeah. we're just always like uh, i like joe rogan says i think we're we're evolving into this new thing yeah i mean for well for real dude i mean you got that uh that, that, we'll see there you go full full circle man because now we got the back to the eight-year-old kids who are growing up now fucking yeah. boxing like you know balboa <laughs> well i mean yeah it's uh I read a I read a lot about that kind of shit. I can get real fucking weird about the uh, the future stuff and the merging mm-hmm. with technology, but it seems like that's more and more the case. You know, we're we're getting closer and closer to uh, having way more advanced prosthesis yeah. than what our bodies are physically capable of doing, and uh, they're already doing stuff that uh, directly integrates with the brain. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, like. Uh, the ocular implants right. that connect right to the cochlea inside the fucking in, inside your ear. Uh, they, I mean, that's a robotic ear that hooks up to your brain, you know, and then they have all these different devices that can be controlled by uh, just, uh, what is it, the nerve senses, sensors, the electrical signals that are right. coming down the nerves off of amputees. <sighs> they're moving, they're moving arms and shit like that. And uh, they're able to grow damn near I, I've seen most of the internal organs grown. There's a few that they're having issues with, but, and I mean, they're able to grow them with your own stem cells. Right. And, uh, or they, they grow them with, uh, and they, they, what do they do? They bleach stem cells, something like that. Like, don't, don't quote me on all this <coughs> exactly. I mean, I'm fucking smoking a joint with you here, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. And then they integrate your stem cells onto these, these, uh, what I believe I saw was 3D printed designs you mm-hmm. know and it just fucking works man it's it's insane technology and, totally. and so your whole body eventually ends up just piece at a time being replaced by robotic parts and you can't tell the difference between the robots and the humans anymore I, I, well yeah that probably is where i mean if you're gonna go with the evolution thing that's probably definitely where it's going i mean it, let me just put it uh uh so like my mom right 85 and sees, like, can you imagine this shit? That, like, she's, you know, we, we've gone from, like, whatever they had in 1934, she, I sure as fuck don't know. But I know what was happening, like, in the 60s and shit. So, let's just take from the, fuck, even in my lifetime, yeah. from the fucking 60s where we are now. You know, like, well, yeah, why wouldn't it go that way? I mean, when I yeah. was a kid, I used to play a little box that I hooked up to the television <laughs> set that I had to switch a thing and I was a little square and I got to go looking for shit you know da, da, da. and then now I've seen recent games and like fuck that's like playing a cartoon you can do that with your mind now yeah exactly they have the they have a little crown you put on oh wait a minute are you telling me like sensors. legit really legit yeah you can buy it on Amazon 600 bucks and, and it's a little sensor fuck? that you put in your head and it's a game controller wow. and you train the game controller right wow. so you say 
you go through a training simulation like the game says jump so you think about jumping and you just focus on the jump thing right and then it goes okay i took a scan of what your brain does when you jump right so it goes try it again you go jump and your character jumps it goes all right think about moving forward <laughs> well you train the thing and then you can fucking navigate this thing just by looking at the screen and thinking yeah. about it um and they have way more advanced ones than that. I saw some some for the virtual reality stuff at uh, the 2020 CES. They were had a lot of sensors on them. And it comes with a haptic feedback suit. Wow. So you can feel everything t- hitting shit. you back. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and there's track pads. And there's even full globes, like domes. See, so you're, like, completely engulfed and it rolls. Wow. And, uh, yeah, and so you put on all this fucking gear and you're in the virtual world entirely. It's and fucking insane to me, man. Yeah, that's out. Like, that's insane you know to I mean? me. Like that, that, that's that, how that, under uh, that's how much under a rock I live. I yeah. truly am a caveman. Like that is insane. And now, of course, the way my mind thinks is like, wait a minute. So like, if it's taking a scan of your head, and it knows what that means. Like if I'm if I wanted to use that against you, and I had that, you know, like like you know, and I like to tell people I'm not a smart guy, but well, if I can think of it, I know someone smarter than uh-huh. me can think of it and use it against me. Well, it you knows know? your brain patterns, right? Okay. So it's like a training device. There's actually a ki- there's a cool kids toy. It's called the Jedi Mind Trainer, <laughs> and I don't know why the fuck I don't have a Jedi Mind. Yeah, trainer. dude, I'm fucking babe, getting one now, right? Babe, babe, why don't I have a Jedi Mind Trainer? You gotta get two. What the frig? Because now I know about it. Unbelievable. I don't know what I'm doing with my life, <sighs> but it's uh. It's a fucking, it, it's just a single sensor, I think, right? right and right. it's just a little ball in a tube. But you train a fan to turn on. So you just think about raising the ball, right? And what you're really doing is you're training the fan to turn on. So when you when you oh, think wow. that certain way and right. it, it collects the whatever brain wow. waves it's collecting. Yeah, it fucking, it turns the fan on. You can levitate the fucking ball in a tube for a little while. I had no idea. Helmet, yeah. I had no idea. That's insane. Yeah, that's wow. fucking awesome. Wow. The toys, man. The toys. The toys. I fucking love the kids' toys these days, dude. They have the coolest fucking toys, man. They have the best wheelie jobbers I've ever fucking seen in the fucking life, dude. Like the f- everything's just like an electronic fucking something with wheels. I need to take a walk down the toy store. They're I fucking cool. I haven't been in forever. I just haven't. I don't yeah. know. I just don't know. We see the like. The kids will be mobbing down. There's like four or five different kids riding, the, and every single one of them has a different, like, scoot thing in a bop. I don't know what the fuck they're called, man. I'm an old, I'm to get the, I'm starting to get that way too, where it's like, fuck, I think I'm starting to get old. I don't know what any of these things are, Ugh. but they have like the, the uh, everybody's got a different thing. Yeah. Everybody think everybody's got a different Willie job, yeah, and they're all cool as hell. And going back to music, you talk about everyone's got their own thing and where they're coming from. Dude, I, I can't tell you how many times someone will come up when you're gigging or, hey, man, you guys know any country. And I'm like, first, we have to agree on what we think is country. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with that statement 100%. All right? Like, if you're not hitting me with, with uh, you know, what I know, you're hitting me with and the one that I really liked was uh, Honky Donk Badonka Donk. Like, get the God damn fuck out of here with that. Unbelievable. Get the fuck out of here. Uh, save a horse, ride a cowboy. Get the fuck out of here with that bumper slogan. You know, that's a bumper sticker slogan. That's not a fucking song. Uh-huh. And it's definitely not a country song. No. Man, if you ain't that telling me, you know, like, song. man, they like to give it the cliches. If you ain't telling me about your fucking dog dying or your fucking, you know, dude, I want to feel that shit, you know? Yeah, man. Like, yeah, when Johnny Cash, or no, when Hank Williams says, I'm so lonesome, I could cry, dude, I believe every fucking word of it, you know? A lot more than I think, hungry, don't, but don't. <laughs> what the fuck? You can't do it. Like, I, I've been around long enough. I know pop music when it snuck its ass in there. It snuck its ass into butt metal. You oh, know? Yeah. It's a fucking, that's all that is, dude. That's all that is. It's in everything. It's butt metal. They just want, all they want is something they can replicate. That's all yeah. they fucking want. You know what I mean? And they take out, they take out all the risk. By just making it popular right. to have simple music, it's 120 beats per minute, and you know it just goes through it's very simple chord progressions, and it's just first oh, chorus, first chorus, bridge, yeah, chorus, formula. chorus, 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 formula, yeah. and it's that's it. There's your song. Yep. You know, it's three minutes long. Maybe it's three minutes and 29 seconds. You know, and it's like it's these it's this product. Yep. It's not art. Yeah. It's a product. Oh, totally. And they sell the shit out of it, and they fucking force feed it to people. They, you know, they make sure that you hear it mm-hmm. as many times as they can because you're fucking 
pattern recognition processor we call a brain loves that kind of shit and right. you know by the time you hear it the third fucking time it's like oh damn yeah i know this fucking dance yeah you know yeah. and it's stimulating your goddamn brain and you don't even have a choice over it because you're gonna play it everywhere you go i i am I'm convinced that the people of my um uh, people uh, how do i put this people of my age area i'm convinced that um that's generation or whatever that is uh, only know 40 fucking songs yeah because those are the ones they want to hear all the fucking time oh, all the fucking time you just heard the fucking thing play it again what <laughs> the fuck is wrong with you the fuck is wrong with you <laughs> yeah haven't you heard it enough fuck i have uh but you know i mean what are you gonna do man that's the way it is I mean, it reminds me of this story that i heard um and it was uh i think it was i think it was Kearns who told me this it had to be Kearns. Uh, i guess uh, there's lemmy and slash go in to, to to jam together or something like that and uh uh Sla- and slash says to lemmy hey man you want to run uh ace of spades and lemmy goes what you want or what sweet child of mine <laughs> you know, and that, and that's what I'm saying. But you know, however, you go to see those fucking guys; they, they gotta play bet. those fucking songs. Oh yeah, you know. But but you know, I mean, I guess that goes back to that. Uh, what's the the the, the quote? Uh, you you got to play what you got to you got to play what made you. You got to yeah. play what made you. Yeah. The fucking Eagles kicked. Uh, God damn it! What's his name out? Because he wouldn't fucking hit the high note at the end of that. Oh really? Uh, yeah, that was in that huge documentary on it or whatever. At least that's what it portrayed. They oh were, really? Fuck, is it Don Felder? Uh, fucking yeah. I I, I, I probably I sound like an asshole right now. I always sound like an asshole. That's okay. <laughs> but they were just like, nah, man, we're we're, we're gonna play the hits, you know. And and they they were intent on giving the fans what they paid for, right. which was these are all the, this is the list of songs. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That are number one or you know you know top ten hits. They're fucking huge and people want to see them. They're paying to see them. We're playing all these songs right. and we'll play some other shit, but that was like, dude. Yeah, I mean, we'll you just the people you, what they pay for kind of shit. I, you I just that. literally fucking summed up. Uh, dude, watch the way I tie this shit together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you you just summed up uh, the Sin City Centers. Yeah, I mean the original sin. You just you just summed that up. That this this band, fucking was this band, and then it wasn't that band because Todd went to do Slash, and then it became another version of that band. But that original band released an album, and that's what people know us for. Plus some other things we do, and every time we play, it's that show. You know, of course, Kearns is great, so he'll fucking, you know, he'll make jokes and make it, you know, that's, that's what's fresh about the Sitter show, is that it's uh, it, Kearns. It's, yeah. you know, you're not only are you getting the songs that you know you're going to fucking hear, but you never know what the fuck joke that guy's going to tell, you know, and, and, and there's really a, a, an audience thing that, that is really kind of built into that, and some of them were there, and it's like a family reunion type thing, and everyone's kind of hip. It's kind of like a, it's the closest thing that I could equate to, like, a high school reunion. Like, hey, motherfucker, how have you been for a year? Hey, how, you know, that? hey, man, what, what, yeah, blah, 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 that kind of crap. And, um, it, but it's, it's a blast, and none of us saw it happening. You know, like that fucking thing was just a fucking train wreck ready to fucking derail at any fucking moment, you know. But then, like, all of a sudden, like, that original lineup with that original album, which was written by, you know, Todd. Great album. Yeah. Oh, thanks, brother. It's, we just celebrated 10 years of it. No shit. 10 years. Well, here was the deal. So, because it's that album and because Todd wrote, you know, I think I wrote one song, Brent, I think it has a co-write on songs. So, because that album is primarily Todd... Uh, when Todd left the band and the first, you know, d- fucking anybody who follows that band, it had a fucking great drama train for a while, man. Just, oh, it just always insane. Did. Oh, God, it was so fucking insane. I look back at it now and I'm like, oh, my God, that was my fucking life. <laughs> Rock and roll. You know, Jesus Christ, so much drama. Anyway, um, uh, so and we, he, when he split, it was like, well, he's not in the fucking band anymore. He wrote that song. You got to pull that shit down, man. We can't fucking sell that type of thing, right? And that's what it was. And... um. And the beautiful part about that is that the four of us were always tight. You know, Todd got the fucking gig of a lifetime and it had to go, you know. So um, uh, and then we were blessed to get Zach. And then that was a whole different trippy fucking drama ride, dude. It was, And then that fell apart. And then I had quit somewhere in there. And it's like, you know, dude, it's just fucking crazy. But 10 years later, that first album that just came up, that was fucking 10 years ago. 
10 years ago. So what we did was we recorded three new songs as a band. There were two of the songs were on the album Broken Record, which was the second album because we released two albums with, with Todd. And um, <clears throat> and that second album was just supposed to be an acoustic record. Uh, but some of those songs we play live. So we wanted to record the live versions of those songs. Uh, and then we Todd wrote a new one and we went in and laid that down. So uh, what we were going to do before all the chaos happened was re-release the album because it's the four of us, you know, and it's our music, you know, and and put these three new tracks on it. And all this was going to happen, dude, and then it happened. You know, so it put everything on hold, you know, but we were pretty proud about that. Like, God damn, dude, 10 years, and 10 years without, it, it's, what's cool for me is that it's grown its own myth. Like, it yeah. took on a life that none of us saw it taking on you know fuck we were just gonna go out and play fucking misfit songs you know <laughs> it's one of those it's one of those things where it's like uh you go out and you you fucking just tell everybody your big shit and then everybody just goes those guys are big shit i guess yeah and then, <laughs> and then you know, guys I... just immediately pretty much had a name man i remember going to see you guys all the fucking time at the dive bar we, and we were just like these fucking guys right here, you yeah, know. This it, is the fucking real deal. A lot of that comes from fucking. I always give it up to Kearns, man, because this is, you know, he's a. Uh, I just uh, he's the, one of the greatest front mans I've ever seen in my life. He's captivating. He's really captivating. His stories are hysterical. He's just a stand-up comedian, stuffed in a fucking tall white alien rock star. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so fucking this guy. And the first time I saw him, uh, I walked up to him on spot. And I was like, hey, dude, I know you got a laundry list of fucking guys, man, but I'll back you up any day. I waited my whole life for a front man like you. You know, and fortunately at that time, his front manness, how good the band was, metal just starting to take off in town, and a pretty clever manager at the time who was really treating us like we were, he was really, you know, really making people think that we were the fucking shit. But, but in all honesty, the, they did earn it because they start off at the dive bar fucking around yeah. playing misfits and whatever the fuck they want to play and then all of a sudden some knucklehead from the Rio comes out and goes fuck man if they'll pack this shithole you know they'll pack my fucking voodoo lounge shithole so and then we fucking go up there on Tuesday nights and then all of a sudden fucking that takes off and fucking uh, now we got an album out and then that fucking leads over to the house residency here and this gig here and all these guests are coming into play and like for, you know it was like and when you're wrapped up in it dude I mean I look back on 10 fucking years ago Go. I look back on it now and go, fuck, I was just playing songs. But like to see it with my new eyes, I'm like, God damn, dude, that was a lot of shit. Different yeah. show every week. Who's the guest? Learn his fucking songs. Fuck rehearsal. We'll do that shit. A sound check. You better know your fucking shit. Oh my God, you don't know your shit. You know? <laughs> it, dude, that all the time. It's like, fuck off. <laughs> oh. I just wanted to play Misfits songs in the fucking bar and get drunk. <laughs> yeah, you guys were playing with everybody too. Oh, man. dude! And you brought some fucking fantastic names to the club, man. And made and made some really fucking beautiful friends during that time. That you know, and like, and the first one that comes to mind is Vin. You know, Vin was always supportive, man. He was always there, and just like, you know, and then I got to know him because he drank and I drank, and I'm the only one of the sinners who drank at the time. And fucking, so you know, I'd go out and drink with Vin, and like, but I don't know Vin because I'm not a Pantera fan because I live under a rock. So I don't really, I just know Vinny's a rock star, and his brother got fucking shot on the same day Lennon got shot. This is all I know of Vin, and um, and he becomes one of my fucking best friends, man. And like for a fucking year or whatever it was that we were hanging out, dude, we were hanging out all the fucking time i had never met a more genuine sweetheart fucking decent motherfucker in my life dude he's just yeah, a fucking sweetheart great. and then people would tell me all the time like you know they star fuck vin through me and they're like dude you don't know even you fucking better i'm like what you the fucking guy who makes me breakfast like <laughs> after we've been fucking drinking all night so then like i watched a, i watched a documentary <laughs> and then i was like Oh, Vinny's kind of, you know, big. And then I teased him forever because, like, because we hung out and we don't play together. Yeah. You know, like, I always teased you him. You never got to, you never played with him? Well, I played with him several times. Oh, okay. But, but we were very, you know, broken up. And and every time I got to play with him or got to hear him, I'd always bust a shot and go, oh, yeah, that's right, you're a fucking drummer. Ah! That dude's oh. amazing. Oh, dude. dude, he's ridiculous. 
Fuck, probably one of the best goddamn metal drummers of all time. You know, and it's funny, man, because I always thought, and I'm going to tell, uh, tell this fucking story because, uh, you know, this is the kind of guy Vin was. So um, Vin took a, a real liking to me, and I, never, and I never quite got it. We had jammed a song. Uh, it was, it was, it, we, we had played Walk, and, uh, and it was like I had to play guitar on it. Even though I am the bass player, I'm going to play the guitar on it. Oh, great. You mean the guy we're going to play the song, one of the biggest songs from the fucking guy and the guy whose brother who died. So now, like, if I fuck this tune up, all eyes are on me. Yeah. Like, you know, that's the role I'm coming from. So I'm on this song. I am not going to fucking fuck this up. He missed a note in the fucking solo. Right. No, no. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's right. I told you the story, brother. Well, there you go. No, I don't know. That. Oh, oh, oh. No, I no. no there, it comes that's to- fantastic because that's how fucking cliched and asshole the goddamn community is. It's yeah. like, back off, man. Back so, off. This so, shit's all right. right. So we're fucking doing this, right? <laughs> anyway, we do it that fucking night. Everything's fucking cool, man. Vin and I are having a great fucking time, man. We go out fucking drinking. And then, like, it's 4th of July weekend, so, like, the fucking next night, we're doing the exact same show, only now I've been fucking drinking with Vinny. Vinny, right? I've been drinking with Vinny. So then we go up to play. And what have I been doing all day? Drinking with Vinny. And then before we do that fucking song, who does a shot? Me and Vinny, right? So needless to say... The first night I nailed it. <laughs> I was drunk the next night. So when that fucking solo came up, and plus I was playing my Les Paul the first night, and that night I brought a, a guitar with a, with a whammy bar because I, instead of tweaking the neck, I wanted to actually get the sound. Yeah. So, you know, and 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 um and I should have just tweaked the fucking neck because it's what I was used to. So when it came to the, to the fucking solo, I just was drunk and fucking I don't know how this play guitar. Play you're not used to it, playing. It, yeah. So so I did it, but it was it was kind of shitty. And 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 Vin caught shit for it. You know, I caught shit for it. But you know, I can't believe he'd play this with any fucking asshole. He's such a dick, and Ben they got the wrong brother and just. Horrible, yep. horrible shit. Yep. So, um, I blame the I blame the Facebook. <laughs> anywho, a billion, and of course I've completely forgot about it. And Vin and I become fucking tight as fuck. And one night, uh, Vinny introduces me to somebody. I can't remember who it was, but we've been fucking boozing again, and we're gambling and having a good time. And Vin uh, says to the guy, he goes, "Man, I love this motherfucker. I'm gonna tell you why, man. He's the only guy that played my brother solo the way he wrote it." And it was right then that I went, Dawn, that's the liking. Yeah. He knew I respected his brother. You know, that was it. So, or his, you know, so. It's important. Yeah. And plus, I treated him like I didn't fucking know him. You know, yeah. You know, he just fucking, you know, it's funny. It was, he had a bunch of guys around. I mean, Vinny, you know, he had a crew. And he, and Vin could drink from a pretty dark place. And, um, but, man, I've, fuck, dude, I've got, I, I hung out with that motherfucker for a year, dude. I lived in his house. I was the kind, I mean, well, I would sleep there. I, when he would leave town, sometimes I would watch that. I mean, we were fucking tight. You know, well, another one is I pass out the fucking couch one night and fucking Vin comes out. And he goes, hey, man, breakfast is in there and he's fucking eating salad. I just kind of look at him and I go, I'm just gonna tell the motherfucker eat salad, whatever. So I walk in and then no, dude, it's a full fucking spread, like catering, like sh- like shit everywhere. And this motherfucker did it. <laughs> you know, he fucking would cook that shit for his crew, dude. He was just a fucking lovely, lovely human being. His brother was the same way. Just yeah, and I was giver, very, man. yeah, it was very unfortunate. I never got to meet his brother. Yeah. They're both, yeah, just fucking uh, fantastic people. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, and. And, and Vin was, and, but here's how bitch and Vin is. I'm gonna sum Vinny up right now. Everybody, everybody in Vegas has a picture of them with Vin. Yeah. Everybody. And when it's flying all over Facebook, it makes me laugh. You know, it's fucking great. He, oh yeah. Yeah. He was everywhere. Everyone knows Vin. Yeah. That's because yeah, he just partied. He yeah. just he lived in Vegas and drank yeah. all night and partied at every fucking yeah. bar in town, man, yeah. and took pictures to everybody. Yeah. Probably bottom shots. Was so fortunate fucking to fucking just be around nicest. him. Yeah. Oh my God! And this is the other fucking great story, man. He fucking calls me up one night. He goes, "Hey, man." <laughs> he goes, "Hey, man, come over and drink uh, vodka with me." Oh, okay. And I go over to the studio, uh, where he's mixing down one of the Hell Yeah records, uh, the one I think before. <coughs> I, I don't know, one of them. And, um, and he goes, hey, man. And he's doing this Russian thing. Come drink vodka with me. And I'm like, yeah, man. And we sit down, and we're fucking drinking. And, we're, and he's playing me. He's like, man, what do you think, man? I'm going, man, this is fucking insane, dude. And, um, and then I, I kind of picked up on a certain part just, just because it's the way my head works. And when that part came around the second time, I heard something different. And I voiced my opinion. I go, hey, Vin, I, I go, the second pickup to that fucking one part when you do that fucking, that pickup, like, 
one of those it, the bass drums ain't the fucking same volume as they are the first time around and the bucket he goes and it was the greatest thing Vin goes he looks at me he goes man that's been fucking with me too hey let's fix that <laughs> I so love it so funny so funny god damn man that's been fucking with me too yeah, fucking Vinnie Paul, man. Oh, okay. so I'm Killer gonna, guy. I'm going to have another smoke there. And speaking of Vinnie Paul and speaking of sinners and all that stuff. So yeah. I have another funny video to show you guys uh -oh. that I had brought uh, from the, the tube of you. And uh, it was a video that we put out uh, called Got a Girl, which was a sinner's song that I wrote. And it was the only one I wrote on that record because Todd wrote that goddamn record. And I want people to know about it. So uh, that really had nothing to do with it other than the bass lines. And... Um, some of them uh and uh anyway so we wrote this fucking tune uh and then they came in and they fucking rocked it i had originally written it in my garage and i was trying to crack, uh, grab a, a cake vibe like the original version of this has more of a cake vibe to it it's more funky and um uh, but when we got in there with the centers it was just fucking full borg anyway it's a little tune called got a girl uh, written and uh, directed by uh, the ex manager the video wise and there you go that's the one that's the one that's the one. And Todd had just got back from uh sexy and have chicks. Slash. Great, Brent wants chicks in the video. Rob. We're doing a video or something? We're doing a video? Yeah, we're making a video. That's why we're here. We're Let's video. do it in Amsterdam. Wonderful. Rob wants to go to Amsterdam. Should be Asian chicks with samurai swords. In Amsterdam? Sure, it could be a concept piece. We could be swimming with dolphins and Asian chicks. That's ridiculous. Well, how about... No! no! What do you think, Ellis? How about punk rock Saturday Night Fever? Don't be a numbskull! Hey, will you watch the hair? You know, I spent a long time working on my hair, and he hits it. He hits my hair. You want to make a disco video? It worked for Kiss. Hear me out. My video is about growing up in the mean streets of Brooklyn. Brooklyn? You're from Redondo Beach. Trust me. I can almost see it now.
So he is still having himself a cigarette. That was his music video and such. You can definitely uh, check out all things Doc Ellis, by the way, at DocEllis.com. He has all his Facebook and social media and all kinds of good stuff up there. And, uh, yeah. Oh, fun. What is this going on here? Oh, coming to Vegas. I remember that shit. Anyways, I don't need to be playing around on YouTube. How you guys doing out there? Thanks for watching my uh, podcast as I give you the creepy eyes. No, it's not real, though. I know uh, watching me talk to me and my homies in Vegas is like the most super exciting thing in the world. So everybody that's made it, uh, what, almost two hours into this thing, you are fucking amazing. I really appreciate you watching my podcast. I really appreciate your support. Spark up this fucking hootie right here, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, the man himself coming back to town. You're all right. I was just telling everybody at home how much I appreciate them watching the uh, To the Fullest podcast. Yeah, let me turn this over right here. We got a microphone for YouTube. Bam. Oh, Bam, look you up. did a computer thing today? I did a computer thing today where I hopped on the phone. And I wanted to figure out what the fuck you were all about, so I had to download an app. So I downloaded an app oh. so that I could watch your show. What app did you download? Uh, the app that it was, uh, hold on, I'll tell you. Oh, I don't have my phone on me. Um, I don't know, I'll text it to you or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Was it the, uh, was it I'll the, take a picture of the, screen too, was it the Podbean app or uh, that, was that it the YouTube like a, app? No, no, it wasn't YouTube. Podbean probably. That's the one. That's yeah, the one. We, we do the Podbean. The Podbean actually is the uh, hosting service so that you can subscribe to the RRS feed and hook it up to your favorite app. So you actually don't need to use the Podbean app. You can go to the Podbean website and uh, grab the link from the website and put it in whatever app you use to listen to podcasts already. And Podbean hosts it for me that way. Huh. They'll also, like, post stuff for me. So now I have it, like, posting to my Facebook and to my Twitter and stuff like that. Anytime a scheduled uh, podcast pops up, Podbean uh, will send out a little blast to social media. Cool. Well, I, I followed you today, so I'm hoping it lets me know when you're... When you're on TV. Thank you. And then I also saw that uh, they had a whole bunch of suggestions for me, and your boy Rogan, my boy Rogan, your our boy Rogan, was uh, was uh, highly featured. He, oh, nice. Yeah, he that fucking dude. I watched him last night talking to somebody. I don't know who the fuck it was. He's amazing. Yeah. I, he, sometimes they'll just you put little clips on there, and one of the, and, oh, that's what it was, was this mathematician guy, man, talking about conscious. Oh, I dude. love what he has signed. Dude, so this guy, like, I just turned it on to see if, if, if I was even anywhere smart enough to understand anything this motherfucker was saying. And, um, uh, and I highly recommend everybody does that every now and then. But my first question to Rebecca, as I flipped it on, I said, how come all the motherfuckers in the know look like this geeky motherfucker? <laughs> and they all had the same look, man. He's wearing a fucking little vest, little thing, little fucking things, got little thingies, you know. His fucking hair's all fucking, you know, just like all of them, man. They just look like these. They, they, those motherfuckers are always in the know. <laughs> he's just trying to present. He's just trying to be very presentable. Yes. Or not offensive. Yes. You know. But it was pretty beautiful because a, a couple of times, a couple of times, yeah, uh, I would, because I was, because I'd get my mind blown by something he'd say, and I'd immediately look to see what Rogan's reaction was. And Rogan spent a lot of time doing this. Yeah. I just fucking, like I was, like, what the fuck? Well, my favorite thing about uh, listening to something like that on the Rogan podcast is that he will make people take two steps back. He just goes, uh, hang on a second. 
Okay, you're you're moving a little faster than I can comprehend, and uh, why don't you go back and explain this part for me real quick before we move on to the next step? Yeah. And uh, and and just him doing that really makes a huge difference in the whole listening process because I mean, fuck yeah, he was moving very fast, and I wasn't getting all of it either. And so when he, you know, <laughs> yeah. if Joe Rogan's making sure he can understand it, it really helps that it helps me understand it as well. And totally. he's really good at that. Yeah, he is. He's uh, he's well. I mean, I want to sit here and fucking brag about the guy all day, but him and uh, uh, Chappelle are two people that I've uh, recently discovered that uh, I love the way their minds work, mm -hmm. and I find the things they want to talk about fascinating. Because more often than not, it's the things that I would like to talk about, you know, type of things. And um, and their stand-ups are both very com com comedians. Yeah, you know, especially those two guys. Uh, Chappelle, I was watching the other day, where he was talking. He treats the, and you can tell he's a musician. He's got this different. They, they're both very honest. Rogan's great in the sense that, like, he'll play both sides. Like, you know, he'll he'll go pretty deep down the rabbit hole, and then, and then like you're saying, mm -hmm. he'll be like, well, yeah, but but what about you know? And they're like, oh yeah 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 yeah. You know, or Chappelle's just fucking deep. Yeah. Chappelle's like Bob Marley, man. He's fucking. He's telling you something from the heart, and he's telling you something real really real oh, you know yeah. in, a, in a in a deep way you know well i think that's what's so special about them as uh performers you know they take the stage and uh it's a lot like even um i would compare it to george carlin he, right yeah dude totally Who, he's not telling you a joke the whole time no right he's he's giving you some real shit yeah and uh and it and, <coughs> and you appreciate it a lot and then you know they they wrap it up with a fucking punchline and it's mm -hmm. hilarious right. and they're really good at that you right. know but right. it's it's that honesty and it's that realness that i think is what puts them over the top of a lot of other comedians in the business you yeah. know Cor Carlin had uh, it's funny that you bring him up because he's truly a, uh, I call him a prophet I truly think he is and um, and he hit me very young man he hit me uh, 77 when he did that HBO special uh, where he's in the round and he's telling the seven dirty jokes and I listening to the guy give a 15 minute setup for seven dirty jokes my dad happened to walk in uh, now this would make me 11 years old my dad walked yeah, no, yeah, and uh, my dad, yeah, my dad, I'm bad. I suck at math. And my dad walk in, and um, ten years old. And my <laughs> and my dad walks in, and he's only there for the punchline, man. He just caught the dirty words. Yeah. He didn't catch the brilliance. And I'm ten. He didn't catch the brilliance of the 15 minute setup of all the other words that are used to describe the dirty words. Yeah. You know, I'm just like, dude, that is fucking genius, right? So then um, I really got into Carlin. And I followed him his whole career, and I watched him get angry. And when he got angry, uh, um, you know, it was it was awesome. You know, I mean, especially to, to anybody who's got a, a little bit of rebellion, free thinking, you know, what the fuck, and, and, and maybe you're cursed with it, maybe I am, you know, but I, I have a lot of what the fuck in me, yeah. you know, and, uh, uh, and, and Carlin is telling you what's, dude, it's, he's putting it on the fuck, that bit, and, we, and you know exactly the fucking bit I'm talking about, <laughs> that bit, dude, that was out decades ago, yeah. you know, and it's been going on. And it will continue to go on. Now, I don't know what the fucking fix is for it. I'm hoping Presidente's fighting a good fight. But if he's not, man, we're, we're, we're some deep shit, you know. You know, we're getting, we're getting, and, and you can't tell me for a paranoid uh, conspiracy nut theorist or whatever it is you want to fucking call me, you can't tell me that's not control. Yeah. That's control. You are controlled. That's like uh, technically going against the uh, First Amendment, our yeah. freedom of speech. It's telling yeah. me what I can and cannot say. You know, exactly. It's, it's, who are you to say that I can't say certain syllables? Like it's, you know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. And, and that one cracks me up too. And that I've always been fascinated. I mean, as an uh, another great story. I once got busted for writing uh, "fuck." on my wall as a kid yeah. with a number two pencil on the wall. I don't know why the fuck I did it. I'm a kid. I just wrote it on there. But, you know, then, then my dad comes in and he sees it. 
and like and I spelt it wrong. I spelled it F U K. I'm a kid. I don't know how to spell. And uh, and, and my dad comes in and, and, and like and at the time, you know, I was like, what? The? You know, he's you know, I can't shit for it, and I got to clean it up. And of course, like you know, he does the, the dad thing. But I've often thought about this in my older years of how I would have reacted to to walking in because I don't have children. So how I would have reacted to walking in and seeing a ten year old boy fucking you know had written fuck on his wall. And not only is he a fucking dickhead, he's a fucking moron. You know, like, what is going through his head? What the fuck is wrong with this kid? But it was because uh, this word fascinated me. And I found this word fascinated to me because it, it, it's like the, the queen. I mean, there's, this, is, this is cliche. Yeah. It is the queen mother of words. Is why, and you're not supposed to use it because it offends so many people. Yeah. Why? Why is it any different? I'm going to use this visual example on the cameras. Of course, man, I keep thinking we're on radio. Uh, that's probably why I'm so jabby. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, I saw some lady say one time, think that this was offensive but she wanted to give the people the whole bird and i thought or no bird that was it the bird so so basically the way i see it so what is the difference between this and this it's it, it the, the 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 meaning behind it and the intention behind you doing it is the same yeah you know, that's the way I think. You know, it's the it's, intention. It's, it's the intention. I mean, when people use, you know, I'm not going to say it, but I mean, believe me, I would, but I just don't want to because it's too crazy. Yeah. When Carlin did the bit about that N word, right? Yeah. And why doesn't anybody get mad? And I saw some comedian the other day fucking say the greatest thing. I don't know. Maybe you, you heard it because you listen to music. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, um, so the, Carlin says, why don't you get bad, mad when, when uh, Richard Pryor or Eddie Murphy? He goes, because they are. And he says the word, right? And it's, it's a very funny bit. But when Carlin says it, the intention behind it means nothing. Yeah. It's the anger. It's, the, it's, the, it's how you say it. It's the meaning behind it that gives it anger. And you can put that into anything. Yeah. You know, so um, I, I, anyway, that's the way I think. I always like it's like in uh, silly movies when people choose not to cuss and they always come up with just yeah. an elaborate, elaborate replacement swear words, oh, but God. then they still say them with the same intention. You totally. know, you know exactly what that fucking person totally. means. That re- that, They're that, still that, swearing at you, man. <laughs> that's like watching. That's like watching the shenanigans. Ex- that's like watching the Exorcist in in like in a movie theater. And man, and it's the scariest movie you've ever seen. Then watching The Exorcist, like on I don't know Channel Thirteen after they cut it up. Oh it's my god! It's the funniest goddamn movie I've ever seen in my life. It was written by a comedian. <laughs> Everything else that dude wrote was like a, a comedy before The Exorcist. Dude, there was oh supposed to be. Oh my god! Jesus, yeah, you see that movie uncut in a theater in a dark <clears throat> movie. You're 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 gonna that's gonna that's gonna stay with you. That's gonna stay with you. Then again, you see her say your 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 mother stills. Steals rocks from hell. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what the edited version? Yeah, man. That one Your sticks mother with you. steals rocks from hell? Steals them. St- flat out rips them off. How much does a rock from hell go for? I, I mean, I would. I, pay, I don't know what the street value is. I would pay a little is. bit of money for some hell rock. No idea what the street value for hell rock is. What do you do with hell rock? I don't know. And why does my mom have to steal them? Right. I know. You know other people down here. Hmm. Why are you putting all that shit on my mom? I think I'm curious about hell rocks. Fucking hell rocks. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker's talking about rocks up in here. I know, right? She's stealing them, too. So apparently she can't afford them, so they must be expensive. Or she's just a fucking deviant. But, my, but I can't see a deviant mom just stealing rocks. Not from hell. It's too hot. <laughs> no water down there. It sucks. Uh, <laughs> so that's fucking fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> the edited versions of, of horror movies on public TV is just <sighs> fucking goddamn terrible. It's like, it, like you said, sometimes it's hilarious. Sometimes it's unwatchable garbage. Yeah. You know, they t- let's take out all the good parts of this movie I'm trying to watch right now. You know, like, God damn it. Don't even show the movie. Don't even show the fucking movie. Yeah. Texas Chainsaw Massacre <laughs> you cannot have on TV. I'm sorry. You're just going to have to cut everything out of it. You know, it's weird, man, because, like, I don't necessarily dig horror movies. I don't. And then I found out it's not horror movies I don't dig because like, The Shining is one of my favorite movies ever. I think, I think that movie is fucking yeah. amazing. It's my favorite movie. And, um, and, and but, but, like, it's a slash-em-up movies. 
Like, yeah. I don't like. Like, I don't dig the Friday the 13th. But it's funny because I have no issue with, like, violence. Like, uh, you know, like, like for, for example, Goodfellas is another one of my favorite movies, right? Great so, fucking movie. So I guess my issue is in Friday the 13th, I got some nut job walking around killing teenagers for being teenagers just being a dick about it however this guy with the ice pick in the back of his head that motherfucker should have kept his mouth shut yeah you know so i guess it's all about that what costume you're wearing when you do it if i'll approve of it or not <laughs> joe pesci is terrifying that man oh, is terrifying Jesus. i don't i don't want to do anything to make yeah. him upset yeah, you can just do whatever you just, just keep him a happy little man Keep that fucking ice pick away from my skull. What was that last movie that uh, Scorsese did with all the heavies? Um, oh, that I Hoffa, did. Hoffa. Yeah. Right. So um, uh, Pesci in that movie, right, where I, th- I think he's playing Giacana or something like yeah. that. But he looks a billion years old. He's wearing those glasses. Hair slicked back. And he's still the scariest guy yeah. in the room. I Ugh. dude, I didn't, I I uh, I had a hard time getting through that movie. Honestly, I thought oh, every, was, I thought everybody was way too fucking old, yeah. and like it was like, man, they should have made this movie like twenty goddamn years ago. Oh no, it wasn't Hoff. It was uh, uh, no, we won't say the word. Then no reason to advertise that thing. Yeah, yeah. Fuck, yeah. do your own research. Yeah, it was right. on. It was it's on Netflix. Yeah, go to Netflix. You'll see it along with a bunch of other stuff. That oh, apparently, yeah. I'm not hip on. I'm not hip on the Tiger King, man. I haven't, I haven't seen it. I only know I only know about the yeah. Tiger King from what I see on Facebook. My friend, do yourself a favor. You're no. stuck in quarantine. The no. Tiger King is one of those no. things that just keeps getting better. No. Every episode, you're like, this can't. No, you're breaking get my heart. Worse. Are you telling me you like it? You can't it? get worse for can it. Oh no, no, I love it. No. Oh, I love it. I liked it before. No. It was cool, though. You know, oh. I was a trailblazer when oh, it was fuck, man. See, recommended to me of, on Netflix. <laughs> fuck, man. Beck's been trying to get me to watch that fucking thing, and I'm like, fuck no. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm oh. not watching the stupidest fucking thing in the world. It is the stupidest thing in the world. Well, good. Then my argument still stands. Your because, argument is because, valid. Because someone had told me once, and this is the way I told Beck. I go, look, man, Brokeback Mountain could be the greatest fucking movie on the planet. I'll never know because I have no desire to fucking watch it yeah, at all. I'm right so, there with and you I'm, on and, that and one. I'm fucking the same way about that. this Tiger King thing. I'm like, I don't know, dude. That dude looks fucking freaky. And what's up with the fucking cats? It already comes with questions. Fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of shit that'll keep me up at night. Like, what the fuck? I got enough of that going on. The the fucking show just it's uh it's it's a train wreck on top of a fucking helicopter crash that somehow manages to fucking find its way into a boat. I Jesus, don't know how, man. but this guy fucking drags it out on a jet ski in the middle of a lake and then uh, makes them take pictures of him. Uh, you, and <laughs> what the, <laughs> you know, what the fuck? it doesn't mean it doesn't mean anything if you haven't seen it. Wow. But if you have seen it, you're just like, yeah, that dude did just drag that whole crew out to the fucking lake to watch him drive around on his jet ski for no reason. Oh my god! But, uh, now All that, right, now now I'm t- now I'm, I'm, qu- now I'm quietly curious. Give me a a, sh- a short backstory of this main character mullet guy with the stash. Uh oh. So, <laughs> Joe Exotic. Oh, that's what that means. Okay. Yeah. Well, now a lot of jokes make sense to me. Yeah, he's uh, an, an insane uh, fucking tiger-raising redneck, <laughs> meth-dealing. Uh, now, is this legit? Is this like a documentary or some shit? Uh, or is this like a... Like, fucking, yeah, he's got like two straight dudes that he fucking married because he's got good meth and tigers. Right? Like, they have a triple <laughs> wedding. These dudes are not gay, right? Yeah, but okay. he's gay as fuck, but, you know, I mean, whatever. You're good for him. But, so, uh, yeah. so is there a legal he, thing uh, about this marriage? Is yeah, this like someone he, getting money? Like they get ma- yeah, he, he fucking married these dudes. And then they, but <sighs> the, just because he had really good meth. And then they're, like, banging the chicks around the bar. <laughs> but he's just, it's... But, uh, yeah, I can't ruin some of the parts because the, uh, some of the most ridiculous things kind of ruin surprises. But, uh... Oh yeah! Don't just, spoil alert shit. I, I guess is it, is it an ongoing I, series? I don't want to ruin that. Will there be a second season? There's definitely no second season. Okay. No, so no, no, but is it like a documentary? Is it like it's a, a documentary? Yeah. No it's shit. Supposedly, like uh, the whole time we're I'm watching. How much time we got? Like, we're almost out of time. We're okay. almost out of time, by the way. Okay. My tape's running shut. Okay. Fucking uh, the whole time. Sum it up, I, fucker. I am thinking. 
this can't be fucking real. This is totally fake. You know, like, it has to be fake. But then uh, they keep kind of trying to reinforce that this is not fake. This man is in prison. This, this is fucking, this person lost body parts. Like, <laughs> this isn't fake. This, these people are being eaten by tigers. It's uh, fucking, uh, it, and, oh, it's, it's fucking, it, these are the, some of the craziest people I've ever seen in my fucking dude, life. Dude, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to sum it up. And sum it is, up. Sum up the podcast is, for us. And this is, folks, and this is the reason I'm antisocial. <laughs> this has been another episode of To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. You could definitely check out more of Doc Ellis at docellis.com. He's got all kinds of great social media and everything for you. And uh, once again, thank you for coming and uh, watching my podcast. Uh, please subscribe and do all that good stuff. Give us a like, Doc Ellis. You're the fucking man. you the fucking Thanks man. for coming uh, over. Thanks, Thanks for having me, your house. Brother. It's been a pleasure having you here, man. Thanks, brother. Fucking peace. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my podcast. You can check out more podcasts right here and subscribe by clicking right here. We are a new podcast every Monday morning at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time.